from Giants Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Welcome to the fourth Garden State Bowl. This afternoon, the Tennessee Volunteers, representing the Southeast Conference, meet the Wisconsin Badgers of the Big Ten Conference. This afternoon's Garden State Bowl is brought to you by Light Beer. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. By the 1982 Volkswagens. Nothing else is a Volkswagen. By the U.S. Army. The Army, a great place to be all you can be. By Prudential, for life, health, auto, or home insurance. When you think about your financial security, see a Prudential agent. Get a piece of the rock. Prudential insurance. And by New Shield, the extra strength deodorant soap that fights odor better so you'll feel cleaner, cleaner than ever before. Welcome to Giant Stadium here in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Hello, I'm Pat Scanlon, and this is Garden State Bowl 4. Well, one never knows what kind of weather to expect here in northern New Jersey in early December. But today it appears the weatherman is cooperating. The temperature is in the 40s, and the skies are sunny. And as for the Giant Stadium wind, which can often dictate the tempo of a game, they're minimal today. And so it appears the Wisconsin Badgers and the Tennessee Volunteers have an excellent day to play football. And now for both of those teams' rundowns, here's Ray Scott and Al DeRogatis. Thank you, Pat. Good afternoon, everybody. Tennessee representing the Southeastern Conference, Wisconsin representing the Big Ten. A great matchup as far as this fourth annual Garden State Bowl is concerned. Do you think these two teams properly reflect the type of football played in their conferences? I think they reflect the kind of football that's being played all over America, Ray. The Big Ten is a little different. They're moving that football up in the air. Tennessee, again, does things that have been so traditional with Tennessee. The small things, the kickoff, the, the punt returns. they got brilliant speed. It's the slugger against the boxer, and it always makes for a great contest. And I know that many of our viewers not that familiar with these two teams are wondering how about some of the individuals? How about some of the matchups? We'll tell you about those right after this. Team one, Garden State Bowl. The Volunteers of Tennessee, coached by the veteran Johnny Majors, now in his 14th year of college coaching, his fifth at Tennessee. The Volunteers making their 23rd trip to a bowl game. An explosive volunteer attack. Quarterback Steve Alatore throwing to two speedy receivers. Senior wide receiver Anthony Hancock caught 32 passes this year and scored six touchdowns. Olympic sprinter Willie Galt, 22 receptions and four touchdowns. On defense, six feet four. Senior defensive end Lamont Holt Jeff. 133 tackles on the year. Junior defensive back Bill Bates made four interceptions. The Wisconsin Badgers are making their first bowl appearance in 18 years. Head coach Dave McLean enjoyed victories over Ohio State and Michigan. Quarterback Jess Cole passed for almost 1,200 yards and 12 touchdowns and rushed for 400 yards, scoring four touchdowns himself. The Wisconsin ground game led by junior tailback John Williams, averaging five and a half yards a carry. And on defense for the Badgers, 240 pounds, nose guard, Tim Crumry. Crumry, a junior, accounting for a team leading 74 solo tackles and four quarterback sets. Now we'll be back for the kickoff of the Garden State Bowl right after these messages. Hello again, everybody. Well, since Pat Scanlon said we were blessed with good weather, not a thing has changed, Al. Weather's good. Tennessee, Wisconsin, identical records, seven wins, four losses. You mentioned a few moments ago what sort of... Uh, offensive strategy you just hinted a little bit as what you expected from these two teams as they are about to be introduced to this crowd at giant stadium what what do you think the philosophy is of a dave mcclain and a johnny majors now to to go all out uh, to play it close to the vest prevent mistakes what do you expect i think they're going to go all out i was commenting in the warm-ups, Ray, I couldn't help but appreciate the fact that the Wisconsin kids were tackling while they were going into the end zone over here. Strategically, a very strong offensive line possessed by the Wisconsin Badgers. They are really big. If you go across that line, Ray, they probably 
have a 20 pound minimum per man weight advantage. Defensively, again, Wisconsin appears to be very strong. Now, most folks think well, ten Tennessee is going to uh, throw the football, but if you look at their statistics, they run the football as much as Wisconsin and maybe as effectively as Wisconsin. So it's going to be interesting to see how these two teams shape up. I also think defensively, Ray, uh, they almost mirror each other. It looks like a five-man front when you're looking at it, but then suddenly those two outside people drop off and it becomes a three-four. Very closely matched teams, a lot of youth on both sides, and it argues for a great future for both teams. Incidentally, as uh, various players are going to be starting or being introduced right now, we should make one correction. Earlier in our videotape piece at some of the matchups, some of the individual players expected to play today, the name of John Williams was mentioned. Now, this very talented junior tailback from Muskegon, Michigan, of the Badgers, sustained a knee, knee injury in their final game, their thrilling victory over the University of Minnesota. And while it is expected he will not have to undergo surgery, Williams will not be able to play today. And he's a good one. The game will be played on artificial turf. Members of the Badger defensive unit. And as he introduced the one from the one team, his counterpart from the other team is introduced. That's a nice little touch. Incidentally, the pregame show here today was spectacular, but it's my understanding it can't hold a candle to what is planned for halftime. And Al, I think you're privy to some of the secrets of, as to what is in store for us at halftime. Well, it's an exciting halftime, Ray, and we're going to hold off on just what the McGuire Air Force people are putting it on, General, General Sadler and his crowd, and every year they do a super job for us. And today it's going to be one of the most exciting you will have ever seen. Um, you know, Ray, we both have seen Rose Bowls and Orange Bowls and some of the things they do there. But get ready for this halftime because it's going to be terrific. Incidentally, the officials for today's game are from the Mid-American Conference. The referee, and we'll hear from him very shortly, will be Ted Humphrey. The umpire, James Shad. The linesman, Sam DiBiase. The line judge, Octavio Sergo. The field judge, Robert Moore. The back judge, Eugene Wadzies. And the electric clock operator, Chet Zidradowski. Don Furness has just been introduced to starting fullback for Tennessee's Volunteers, Wisconsin, junior from Miami, Oklahoma. Free safety, Matt now they're introducing the outstanding free safety of Wisconsin's Badgers, Matt Vandenboom. Anthony Hancock is one of the real speedsters of this team and a great receiver. Interesting, Ray, they introduced the two of them because they're going to be looking at each other. They're shaking hands now, but that's Olympic speed, shaking hands with uh, the Boomer, and the Boomer may have his hands really filled with him. According to uh, Dave McClain, he thinks that, uh, and Johnny Majors, he thinks that Hancock could be a number one draft pick. Is that good? And of course, Willie Galt is a true world-class sprinter, and Galt and Hancock are two of the prime targets of quarterback Steve Alatori of Tennessee. So the... Uh, those taking part in the pregame activities, the bands and so forth, have all taken their positions. Both schools have had a goodly number of their followers here in person to enjoy the various activities surrounding this fourth annual Garden State Bowl. Tennessee started slowly, suffered losses at the hands of two of the top ranking teams in the country. Georgia and Southern California, but then came on strong. Played well in losing against Alabama, in losing their next to last game uh, to Kentucky. I think it's generally agreed that the Wildcats were emotionally about as high as a, as a team could be because they knew then that Fran Kersey would be not be back as their coach. But now the rival co-captains in the center of the field and referee Ted Humphrey will be conducting the introductions and the coin toss activity. Lamont Hope Jeffers and number 73, Lee North. Those of you who follow these respective schools don't need to be told about their colors. You know the Badgers are in white with their 
red numerals and the volunteers and their for the field judge. Okay. Here the you are the voice of representative Humphrey. And you're going to call the coin. It's a silver dollar. Call it heads or tails. Well, it's in the air, please. Tails. Tails is the call. He calls tails. And it is heads. Arms is one of the You want the football. You're going to have to kick which way we want to spin this ball. All right. Just run around that way. So Tennessee has won the toss. Look at Hancock and Galt. Remember, last year, number 26, Willie Galt, ran three kickoffs back. Not too many yards, Ray. I think all of them are over 95 yards. Oh, he's, he, he's exciting. Just looking at uh, his statistics, you, it, it breathes with speed. For example, uh, in the way of pass receiving, he's caught 22 passes, but the total, 479 yards. That's he's better. He's uh, good for better than 20 yards every time he catches a football as a receiver. And in the way of kickoff returns, he averages almost the same, a little under 22 yards per kickoff return. Punt returns, there as well. Galt, over 12 yards per punt return. So Willie Galt, number 26 of Tennessee, is definitely a player to watch today. Johnny Majors, fifth year at Tennessee. Dave McLean, fourth year at Wisconsin. We expect to see Pat Haiti handling the kickoff chores for Wisconsin. You know, Ray, looking at these Wisconsin kids, they're as high as can be. Tennessee seems to be taking it like a team that's been to many bowl games. Well, Wisconsin hasn't been there in a while. They're going to be on defense. They're really emotionally very high. 26 I told you about. He's one of the four back there right now. He'll be flanked on his right by number 43, Terry Daniels. Alvin Tolles, number 44, is off to the left of Galt. Now let's see if Wisconsin tries to kick it away from Galt. So wherever you are along our Mislu television network, greetings from Giant Stadium, East Rutherford, New Jersey. This will be Willie Galt at the one. Ten. He's got a hole. Oh, somebody got an arm out as the speedster gets it out to the 20-yard line. Larry Sperlin, one of the Wisconsin linebackers. So now we'll, uh, we'll be continually giving you numbers at the start of the game. We hope we don't overload you with them to identify the players. Steve Alatori is the quarterback, number 16. His fullback is Doug Furness, 31. James Berry is in a slot to the left, the tailback. To the air. First down right away, Anthony Hancock. Now Hancock. Willie Gold is 26. Hancock is 28. Hancock is a senior from Cleveland, Ohio. Galt, the one young man we've been telling you about from Griffin, Georgia, is just a junior. Now, Galt is out to the right. First down, Tennessee at the volunteer 33-yard line. Out of Torrey. Well thrown, but out of bounds. He did not have his control of the football. Willie Galt inbounds. Alatori begged to differ, but the officials say no. Second down. Well, there are a couple of ways, Ray, to stop a big line, and one way is to put the football up and put it up short. It gets to be very discouraging to a defensive front. However, as I look at the spacing of Wisconsin, they look like a draw play could work pretty well against them. If they can get Crumb Ryan, that's no easy job. We'll identify the defenders for you in a moment. Second and 10, Tennessee, their own 33-yard line, just underway from Giant Stadium. The fake was to the tailback. Beautifully thrown. Oh, beautifully thrown. First down. Anthony Hancock and Steve Alatori is showing us some excellent ball handling on that play. Let's take another look at this one. Now, they're going right into the teeth of the Wisconsin strength. When you're looking at that secondary, there's Vandenboom, and we're going to see Greenwood, and he's really testing them right now. So now he's got Wisconsin a little bit concerned. First down, 49-yard line of Wisconsin. Hancock in motion. This is Barry, the tailback. 
struggles for about three yards. Now let's identify the Wisconsin defenders. You will see the heart of this defense, Tim Crumry, number 50, that Al, everybody says he's outstanding. He'll be flanked by Mark Shoemate, 76, and Darrell Sims, number 60. That's the front three. Right now, second down, seven at the Wisconsin 46. This is the tailback, Barry, first down, 35-yard line, and Alatori showed us an excellent ability there to pick out a secondary receiver. If you take a look at it, Ray, both teams will be doing this. Now, they've got their primary receiver, and he's going to keep them deep. Uh, Greenwood is a little bit concerned. He's dropping. He's playing it up close, and then he's dropping deep. So they circle out of the backfield with one of their, uh, one of their backs. You'll notice that both uh, teams, Ray, have their second or third receiver, at least in numbers of catches, one of their deep backs. Both are tailbacks. We have an official timeout here for what uh, reason I'm not really sure. It might be uh, some equipment that has to be repaired on the part of Jody O'Donnell, the junior linebacker for Wisconsin, who's coming over to the near sidelines. Now, I'm already seeing a player not listed on the two-deep chart of Tennessee just checked into the lineup, Lenny Taylor, a sophomore wide receiver from Miami, Florida, and he's going to be in the game. And he's the other track man. When you get Miller, Taylor, Gold, and Hancock, you've got most of that track team. Right there. So right now, there's a timeout in the Garden State Bowl. We'll be back right after this message. I believe whatever had to be corrected, Al, has been taken care of by Wisconsin. It will be first down Tennessee at the Wisconsin 35-yard line. Ray, I noticed that Greenwood has been challenging Hancock. Now, Greenwood always plays the strong side. That means whichever side Hancock will go to, you'll see number 31 on Wisconsin going to that side. Now, he's been coming up to the line of scrimmage. It looks like they may try, that's Tennessee, may try to make a short fake inside move and then try to fly with Hancock. That could be a, a, a very exciting play. Here are the Wisconsin, here are the Wisconsin linebackers. You see number 47 there. Dave Levenick, he's an inside linebacker. Kyle Borland, 32. Jody O'Donnell, 44. Guy Bolio, number 95. You'll see Vaughn Mansfield in the secondary, number 45. Clint Sims, number nine. Al's already been telling you about David Greenwood, number 31, and Matt Vandenboom, number 39. That rounds out the defense. Well, Johnny Majors has been talked to now by one of the officials. And uh, quite frankly, I expect the play is going to resume any moment. I'm checking to see if the clock is operating. It is. 10 minutes, 17 seconds left to play first quarter. No score here in the fourth annual Garden State Bowl, but now Dave McLean is talking with the officials along the near sidelines. Alatari has already completed three out of four passes and looks awfully good in the process. The only one he didn't complete was caught. It was a question of whether the receiver had control of the football in bounds, and it was ruled he did not. They are pointing now. One of the officials was pointing to the goal line or behind it to our left. Turn to the Garden State Bowl after this message from your local station. Alatori. Oh, what a beautiful catch by Willie Gall. And this is an outstanding and sophisticated passing attack we're looking at. Well, they're going again at the strength. That was uh, number 39, Mark Vandenboom. The boomer got him, but he gave him plenty of room. At the 19-yard line of Wisconsin, first down, Tennessee. Complete Mike Miller, Jr. from Flint, Michigan. He's been alternating, bringing in the plays, the wide receivers, 
Al, am I correct in, in noticing there that Alatori did a great job of looking off the man he intended to throw to? Yeah, it's, you know, it's, it's interesting. It's, it's almost a play action, but there's no significance to the play action on that particular kind of a pass. They're not going to get to the passer. He looked off extremely well. He's going short and he's going deep. Gain of six, second down four, Wisconsin 13-yard line. No score, Tennessee threatening. This is Barry, the tailback. And he cuts it inside to within about a yard of a first down at the 10-yard line where he's met by the junior middle guard, Tim Crumry, and linebacker Dave Leveni. Now, he's been testing that middle, Ray, quite a bit. Now, when you're in the middle of the football field and you have plenty of room in that secondary, that's one thing. Down in here, if you test it, watch for either Greenwood or Vandenboom. This is a good spot for an interception. New fullback. Alvin Tolles, number 44. It's third and two at the Wisconsin 11. The tailback, Barry, and he has a first down. He found a crease. It'll be first and goal at about the seven and a half yard line where the stop is made by David Greenwood. Now Tolles will leave the game and be replaced by the starting fullback, Doug Furness. Five. First downs in this drive by Tennessee. 11-49 left to play first quarter. No score, but first and goal. No wide receivers in the lineup. Barry. Just inside the five where it will be second and goal. The first contact made by tackle Mark Shoemate, number 76. Now, Wisconsin is going to. That should be a very interesting show. The Bear with Joe Namath on many of these same stations in the middle of January. Right now, Tennessee. What do you refer to this as a full house backfield, Al? I guess we can call it that. Second and goal just inside the Wisconsin five. No gain. No gain at all. Now, there was just great pursuit. Now, if there's one thing that the, uh, the uh, Badgers will have to look for, again, is the possibility of the same kind of a sweep, only somebody coming back the other way. Watch this pursuit. Now, this is absolutely excellent. The entire Wisconsin team is coming over, and they are popping right here. Hancock gets absolutely nothing. Hancock, the wing back, leaves the game. Third and goal at the Wisconsin five. Now, Willie Galt is back in the game. as a wide receiver to the left. Third and goal, Wisconsin five, no score. 10-15 left to play first quarter. Out of Torrey looking, throwing. David Greenwood was defending. It is fourth down, and Tennessee will go for three. It sure gets tough, Ray, when you get down in there. It's an awfully different kind of football. The football field gets very small, and you have to be extremely accurate. Greenwood came awfully close to picking that one off. Fuad Ravez is the place kicker. Ravez has been successful seven of 15 field goal attempts. The holder will be Olszewski. Jeff Olszewski, a reserve quarterback. But Tennessee is going to be penalized for delay of game, and I'm not sure that they didn't want to do that, give him a better angle. This will be a 17 now rather than a 12-yard attempt unless Wisconsin says no thanks. Decline. So they said, in effect, Try it from the 12. Cut down your angle. It'll be a 22-yard attempt from the 12-yard line. Olszewski, the holder. I always remind myself at this stage, Al, that the holder is a quarterback. He sure is, but they're not going to throw now. And Tennessee is on the board. 10.07 left to play first quarter. A very impressive march for the Volunteers. Good defense in close by Wisconsin. Tennessee leads three to nothing. We'll be back after this message. For the Tennessee kickoff. Following the Tennessee field goal, Thad McFadden is at the goal line. 
flank on his right by King, on his left by Green. Reves kicks off. This is Green. Good return. 32-yard line of Wisconsin. And our first opportunity now to look at this Badger offense. What do you expect from them, Al? As big as, as they are and as good a running team as they are, we might just see the very opposite. Now, of course, the surprise element is to go deep on the very first down. It would be unexpected. I think they're going to try to take control of the line of scrimmage. The quarterback will be Jess Cole, number 10. He likes to run. The fullback will be Dave Mohat. The tailback is Troy King, number 35. Hold it! Pull that back. You know, you... There it is. Surprise. Cole going deep. Oh. And the defender lost Thad McFadden. Carlton Peoples, the cornerback, just plain lost the ball and lost the receiver. I just love it. You know, you come with what you think is going to be the expected, but no, they go with the surprise. The Carlton Peoples turned his back, and that's fundamental rule number one. Thad McFadden, number 20, an awfully good receiver, kept his eye on the ball, turned around, looked up, and there it was. First Beautiful down, catch. Wisconsin at the Tennessee 25-yard line as the Badgers strike quickly. Fake to the tailback. Just missed big number 82, Michael Jones. One of his leading targets, Jones, is a, just a freshman out of Chicago. Hit him in a very vulnerable spot. They're bringing back in Al Siemenson, Thad McFadden. Jones uh, caught the most passes. 23 during the season. Second and 10, Wisconsin, Tennessee 25. Volunteers leading 3 0. First quarter has 9 28 remaining. Seven yards for Troy King, the junior running back out of Freeport, Illinois. Chris Wampler, one of the front line defenders for Tennessee, makes the tackle. It'll be third and short. Good football game. Watch number uh, 28, will have. He's going to be doing the blocking. Puts a great block on him. Troy King, who's done some fine running, makes another nice game. Two good football games. Third and two, Wisconsin at the Tennessee 17-yard line. No wide receivers. Troy King is close to a first down. Close to a first down around the Tennessee 15 or 16-yard line. The offensive line for Wisconsin, Winkler 79, Joyce 71, Versnick 58 in the center, Subak 53, Durger number 70. We're going to have a measurement for the down between the Tennessee 15 and 16 yard line. <laughs> that close, says quarterback Jess Bull to Dave McClain and the other Wisconsin coaches. And the Wisconsin fans here say, go for it. And they will. Tennessee makes one defensive change. The front line defenders for Tennessee are Holt, White, Jackson, Wampler, Ingram, Jeffers, Mike L. Cofer, Peoples, Jenkins, Harder, and Bates. Fourth and inches. Boy, this is going to be have all to do with where it's marked. That was a great defensive charge, Al. It sure was, and it looked like he was not going to do it. They were trying to let Tennessee think. Did they make it? Yep. Just by inches. So back will come the wide receivers, Michael Jones and Thad McFadden, and it's Wisconsin threatening with a first and ten at the Tennessee 15-yard line. Watch the charge of this offensive front. Now, they get off the ball extremely well. Cole is a big man himself. He's 6'2". He's 202 pounds. Back live. Coles calling a first and 10 play. Coles likes to run now, and he can run. He has some room. 
Picks up almost 10 yards. Great ad lib, good thinking by Jess Cole. Watch it. Jess Cole is only a sophomore from Mondovi, Wisconsin. And it's a second and one as a result of that nine yard gain. The ball at the Tennessee six. Wide to the right is Neal, the only wide receiver. Troy King battling for the first down, got inside the five. The one thing Tennessee knows right now is they cannot disregard Cole as a runner. He's obviously good. They're playing it very tight in the middle, but there's always the possibility of Cole pulling that football down and keeping it himself. Now Michael Jones, Al Siemenson, both wide receivers, check into the lineup. Siemenson goes off to the right. Jones, McFadden is off to the left. First and goal, inside the five. Troy King gets about two very tough yards, ridden down by Carl Zander, a freshman linebacker out of Mendham, New Jersey. And Brian Ingram, second and goal at the Tennessee three. This. The line of scrimmage is really what we're talking about here. If you can control that offensive and defensive area, you're going to be doing pretty well. Right now, they're not really moving all that aggressively on the ground against Tennessee. Second and goal. Holes with a keeper. Touchdown. Jesse Cole is into the end zone, and Wisconsin has the lead. So we now have seen that both teams have the ability to move the football. Let's take another look at that. Now, the influence going to the outside is what made it the difference. He's a very sure-handed guy, and he knows where the goal line is. Good block by his tight end, Jeff Nault. Each team had a possession one time, Ray, and they both scored. Mark Doran will try for point number seven. So, Wisconsin, after trailing three to nothing, gets back the lead at seven to three, six fourteen left to play in the first quarter, and will return to the Garden State Bowl right after these messages. If we had any doubts about these two teams not playing it close to the vest, it's already been answered. The ball has been in the air. Both teams have moved it extremely well. It is seven to three, Wisconsin. Pat Haiti to kick off. Speedster Willie Galt is the deep man. Willie Galt at the Tennessee 13. He gets some daylight. Look out. He's gone. He's gone. 87 yards. Remember, a world-class sprinter. And there's one thing that Dave McClain worked on all week. It was that there was one block that broke it loose. Once he made that hole, he was gone. And oh, can he run? Oh, right? my <laughs> goodness. When he started to stretch it out around the 50-yard line, I started thinking of those times that I saw in which he ran the various distances as a hurdler and as a sprinter. Fireworks at the Garden State Bowl. Is Just it ever? <laughs> Look at this hole open up right here. There goes Willie Galt. Now, when you see him break out there, the deep man has no way. Now, you know, he's a good field goal kicker, and he can do a few things. I think Willie was just jogging a bit. Ah, a blur. All right. Tennessee will try for point number 10. Fuad Reves gets it, and it's Tennessee 10. The Badger 7. So I think maybe a good piece of advice right now might be if you head for the refrigerator with something, for something, make sure there's a timeout. You'll miss something. Now, needless to say, when, ten when Tennessee kicks off to Wisconsin, there's a speedster by the name of Thad McFadden who will be waiting for the football. You know, uh, Hattie, it's interesting, he was the last man to try to stop 
uh, Willie Gault. I don't know what hat he does the hundred in, but I think Willie might have beaten him on his knees. He, he just is unbelievable. All right, there's Thad McFadden, flanked on his right by Green, on his left by King. Here's Reves, who has a field goal and an extra point to his credit already. And I'll tell you, this giant stadium is buzzing. Six oh three left to play first quarter. Tennessee ten, Wisconsin seven. McFadden will not run it out. So touch back, and we'll take a look at this explosive Wisconsin offense now, starting from the Badger twenty yard line. The quarterback Jess Cole, only a sophomore. We expect to see Dave Mohap at fullback, number twenty eight. We have not as yet seen Chucky Davis as a tailback. We're going to see Gerald Green in the backfield, number 36. No, we won't. He went onto the field, and now he came off the field. So King is a tailback. Mo half the fullback in the eye formation from the Badger 20. The fullback. Mo half has a first down. I guess, Ray, when you see that uh, kind of explosive attack that Tennessee has, Dave McClain might just make the decision, we better keep the football on the ground, use up as much time as we can, and try to score. He almost strips the football in that, in that particular play. They're going to be tackling there, but, Ray, notice how Tennessee's two inside linebackers are playing. That would seem to dictate that the slants to the right side or the left side is the way to go. That was a first down run for Mohab. Cole. Complete to Neal. So both teams have shown a great ability to move the football in the air. Let's take it from a, a low shot. Now this is into the sun. It's a tough pass to complete, but it's the pass that most scouts kind of look at. He's throwing the very difficult out pattern and hit awfully hard into the sun and pulls it down. Great catch. First down, Wisconsin 42-yard line. 5.30 to play first quarter. Wisconsin trailing 10 to 7. But Cole is letting it all out. Tad McFadden couldn't quite stretch out far enough. But one thing for sure, uh-oh, penalty flag down, Tennessee 31-yard line. It's against Tennessee. I think he had an interference. I don't think it was against Tad McFadden, though. It looked like it was a bit uh, short of him. Let's see if we can see it here. Now, they run into, not bad. That's Thad McFadden up there on the left. It might have been short of Thad McFadden. I don't think he was hit, right? I think it was the receiver trailing by about 10 yards. Right. At any rate, as a result of the penalty, First and 10, Wisconsin at the Tennessee 31-yard line. Gerald Green is in the backfield at fullback, number 36. This is Green. Nothing there except the yard or so. It's a really interesting defense we're seeing. It's one, frankly, that I haven't seen in quite a while. There's a four-man set. They've got two linebackers behind. And then they have another linebacker who's also down at a four-point stance. It's the kind of defense that tells me Tennessee is saying to Wisconsin, we want you to throw the football. Mohab checks back in at fullback. McFadden checks back in as a wide receiver to the left. Michael Jones is off to the right. Second and nine at the Tennessee 30. <laughs> Through behind his tight end, Jeff Nault. It will be third and nine with 444 left to play in the first quarter. This is the fourth annual Garden State Bowl at Giant Stadium at East Rutherford, New Jersey. 10 to seven, Tennessee. We've already had some electrifying plays, not the least of which was an 87 yard kickoff return for a touchdown by Tennessee's exciting wide receiver and returner, Willie Galt. Call in this drive is two for four, but completed for 50 yards. Neal to the left, and here is the shotgun formation. 
Intercepted. Lamont Jeffers. Lamont Colt Jeffers stepped in front of that cold pass, and the turnover gives Tennessee the football at the Tennessee 40. He was very tentative. He did not find his primary receiver. He never saw his Lamont Jeffers turning in front of the man, number 47, a great interception, great field position. So the Volunteers lead 10 to seven and have a first down at the Tennessee 39 yard line. Steve Alatori, the quarterback. Doug Furness, the fullback. James Berry, the tailback. The fake was to Berry. And that one was thrown into a crowd and could well have been intercepted. Now there are three men covering uh, Hancock on that particular play. You've got the two safety men covering him, and you've got a cornerback covering him. It would look like, looking at that kind of a defense, Alatori is going to have to think about going either to his tight end or back out of the backfield. Wide receiver Darrell Wilson, a junior out of Bristol, Virginia, number 87, is into the lineup now. Second down and 10 at the Tennessee 39. Alatori, this is his fullback. 45, 46-yard line, Doug Furness. Ball is retained by Tennessee. Let's see what Alatori has done so far. Six out of nine, 71 yards. Excellent. For Tennessee, third down, four at the Volunteer 46. Wide left is Hancock. Mike Miller is put to the right. Good protection. Mike Miller, the Flint, Michigan junior, is the open man, first down at the Wisconsin 40. And there's a great battle going on at the line of scrimmage. We've heard so much, and rightfully, about Crumry. Lee North, number 73, may not be as big as Crumry, but Lee North can really pop, and he's moving off that ball extremely well. He's, he's controlling Crumry, and Crumry is unable to penetrate as of now. As a result of that last pass completion to Mike Miller, Tennessee has a first down at the Wisconsin 41-yard line. Four minutes, 10 seconds left to play. First quarter, Tennessee leading 10 to seven. Tennessee kicked a field goal on its opening drive. Wisconsin came right back with a touchdown drive and an extra point. Willie Galt then returned the following kickoff for a touchdown, 87-yard run. And now after an interception, this is Tennessee. Out of Torrey. Fine catch, 31-yard line by Hancock. Anthony Hancock, the senior out of Cleveland, Ohio. Boy, what a core of great receivers in this game. Absolutely outstanding receivers. Now, Minnesota continues to play that defensive line very tight. Wisconsin, every time I'm with Ray Scott, I say Minnesota for some reason. We're going to have a measurement for the down. If you're watching this measurement, though, Ray, the Wisconsin team is playing it so very tight up front. They're going to have to loosen up. Tennessee may try to take the ball on the run straight up. First down at the Wisconsin 31-yard line. Out of Torrey, eight completions, 11 attempts. 96 yards. The Volunteers have recorded eight first downs, 340 left to play, first quarter. Now Willie Galt is going to the sidelines. Johnny Majors has been using his wide receivers as messengers. Hancock goes left. Mike Miller comes right. The tight end Johnny Jones on the left side. Alatori on the run. And picks up about eight yards down to the 22-yard line where David Greenwood out of the Wisconsin secondary makes the tackle. The ball will be spotted between the 22 and 23-yard line. Second down, a bit more than two for a first down. The quarterback looking downfield saw that defensive man dropping back. They so much respect the speed of Tennessee that they have to give them some ground, and that's what it leads to. Good gainer. Back live, second and two. And his big fullback, Doug Furness, 
appears to have a first down just inside the 20. Doug Furness, Jr., Miami, Oklahoma, number 31. It's obviously the short yardage runner, and he picks up a first down for Tennessee just inside the Wisconsin 20. The Big Ten in the Southeastern Conference meeting here in the fourth annual Garden State Bowl. Hancock and Galt are both wide to the right. Barry is in a slot to the right. It is ruled an interception at the one-yard line, and now another official says no. It is not an interception. Another official felt he had a better look and saw the ball, I think, skip off the turf into his hands. Let's see if he caught this. This would have been David Greenwood's uh, seventh interception. It looks like a trap. I think it was a good call. Number 31 makes the dive. Let's take another look at this. Court to the security The officials say no. Break for Tennessee, second and 10 at the Wisconsin 20. Wisconsin, I thought, reacted extremely well. And the gain is limited to about four yards. Well, the one thing they've been watching for, and you'll notice that on that far side, none of the Wisconsin defenders left there. The one thing you don't want to do is to over-pursue against a team like Tennessee. They've got that speed that when it comes back to you, you better be waiting for it, and they were. Good play by Ron Steverson. Third down. Six at the Wisconsin 16. Hancock to the right. Tolls is now the fullback. No. Incomplete. Tried to hit his tight end, Mike E. Coker. Fourth down. Fourth down, and we will have the second field goal attempt of this game. Fuad Reves earlier hit one of 22 yards. The holder is substitute quarterback Jeff Olszewski. This will be an attempt of 33 yards. No. Wisconsin is able to hold off Tennessee. The volunteers are not able to capitalize on the pass interception. The score remains Tennessee 10, Wisconsin 7. Wisconsin will have the football following the missed field goal attempt. Let's take this reaction. I think the field goal kickers all rehearsed this reaction. No doubt about it, that one was missed. All right, Wisconsin now on the move with McFadden wide to the left. Wisconsin trailing by three. 2-10 to play first quarter. Gerald Green the fullback. Troy King the tailback. Take a look at this. It's a bit of luck here. Holds it literally out of his hand. It should have been recovered by Wisconsin. Tennessee capitalized. A big play. Let's take another look at this one. Carl, Gerald, Gerald, Gerald Green had a great chance today because Coach McLean was going to start him. Beautiful shot. Carl Zander was a defensive player who stripped the football. First down, Tennessee. 27-yard line of Wisconsin. Steve Alatori, the quarterback. He's been brilliant so far. Pass incomplete. Now there's a pretty heady quarterback. Of course, the Wisconsin fans feel he should be called for intentional grounding. It's merely an incomplete pass. There was a receiver in the general area. 
And that was the first blitz that we saw today, and it's the kind of a blitz that they're going to try to capitalize on that blitz. Now, that's the old throw the ball away trick. Hancock is to the left. Mike Miller to the right. Second and 10 at the Badger 27-yard line for Tennessee. Now to Thrown a little short. Good defense by Matt Vandenboom. Intended for Mike Miller. It will be third and 10. Now, Al, has Wisconsin made any particular adjustments here? The play prior to this one, Ray, they did come with the two linebackers. They may come again. Now, if they do, and it looked like Alatori was trying to anticipate it then, they should take a back out of the backfield and circle him over the center. That should be the open area. Back into the lineup, checks Willie Galt, the speedster, who scored the touchdown on the 87-yard kickoff return. Wide to the right. This is a third and 10 play for Tennessee at the Wisconsin 27. Steve Alatori does not like what he looked at across the line of scrimmage. Tennessee, by the way, on the ground, eight carries, 24 yards. It's been mainly on the arm of Steve Alatori that the volunteers have been able to move at this point in the game. 153 left to play in the first quarter as Steve Alatori consults with head coach Johnny Majors and his assistants across the way. Any surprises so far, Al? Anything you've seen you didn't expect? No, not really. Uh, you know, we knew that Hancock had the great speed. We knew Willie Ball had great speed. We knew that uh, Tennessee, if they were going to work against the Wisconsin defense, they were going to have to put the football up. They've done that. To this point, turnovers, and both coaches were concerned about that. And this is a big turnover right here. We've had two so far, and Tennessee has gotten both of them. The interception by Jeffers and now the fumble recovery. Actually, right now, I'm gonna be very interested in what the two linebackers, really Larry Sperlin, number 49, and Lebanek, number 47, uh, what they do on this particular play. I think that's a Badger that volunteered. <laughs> All right, we're just about ready to go. The strategy has been set. Steve Alatori comes back to the huddle. Third and 10, Tennessee at the Wisconsin 27-yard line. One minute, 53 seconds remaining first quarter. Tennessee leading 10 to 7. Both Hancock and Galt are wide to the left. Mike Miller is wide to the right. Four-man rush. Good defensive play by Matt Vandenboom. Excellent. Tried to hit Anthony Hancock on a post pattern. Instead, we will have a field goal attempt of 44 yards. The holder is reserve quarterback Jeff Olszewski. This is the third attempt of the game for Reves. It is good. A 44-yarder. And Tennessee ups its lead, capitalizing on a fumble recovery to 13-7. to seven. So as of right now, the two turnovers have resulted in one score, the field goal. We've talked so much about the two uh, speed merchants. Actually, they got four for Tennessee. But those two deep safety men, Greenwood and um, Mark Vanden Boom, the boomer, he's somebody we're going to continue to watch. Now, they're testing him. They're continuing to test him. If you do that long enough, you're going to get burned. The deep man is Thad McFadden at the goal line. Green and King flank him. 144 left to play, first quarter. And we've had 20 points scored. Reves not only kicks off and kicks the extra points, I'm trying to figure out what type of a shoe he has on that right foot. It's a little bit different, at least a different color. And 
told it is an actual soccer shoe. McFadden patiently waiting off to our right as we look along the sidelines at the Wisconsin bench, and here we go. McFadden at the two. Fine run back to the 37-yard line. Clyde Duncan just might have prevented a 98-yard touchdown return. Let's take another look at this. Now, McFadden can run, not with the same speed as Gold or Hancock, but he can run, and he's looking at that hole, and he comes awfully close to really breaking something. Look at that wedge. It almost never went down. He was one man away from breaking it. First down, Wisconsin at the Wisconsin 38-yard line. Jess Cole fakes to his tailback. He can run. Close to a first down for Jess Cole. And here at Giant Stadium along the sidelines, our colleague Pat Scanlon. Pat, what have you been seeing? Thank you very much, Ray. Well, the Wisconsin secondary coaches are telling Vanden Boom and those gentlemen that they've got to give the Wisconsin or the uh, Tennessee receivers some trouble getting off the line. They've got to make some contact as they come off the line. They're also saying now that we're getting to the ball, hey, let's come up with the interception. Now back to you. Very good, Pat. With a minute left in the first quarter, second and inches for a first down at the Wisconsin 48-yard line. A lot of time. Michael Jones wanted an interference call, but frankly, I think it was merely good positioning by cornerback Carlson Peoples. You're absolutely right. If there was interference, it was offensive interference. That middle continues to be open, though. Now, I'm looking. They are reacting. That is, Tennessee is reacting to the side of Michael Jones. And it looks like something to the offside away from Jones is the kind of pass you should be throwing. Wisconsin now is going with two tight ends. Craig Frederick has checked into the game. One wide receiver. Third and inches. And Cole gets the first down. Big Wisconsin offensive line of Bob Winkler, Leo Joyce, Ron Bersnick, Mark Subach, Jerry Durger. Eight first downs now for Wisconsin. And wide receiver, the freshman out of Chicago, Michael Jones, checks into the lineup. He'll be wide to the right, along with McFadden. A first down play coming up. 33 seconds left in the first quarter. This is Troy King. Linebacker Lamont Holt Jeffers. He fought off the block and made the tackle as I saw that play. The play was very slow developing. Uh, it was a, a kind of a counter, a comeback, a misdirection type play. It just didn't develop. We had to keep our eye on Jeffrey Knoll. Now, Jeff is a big man. He's a sophomore. He's 6'3. He's 234 pounds. That's the end of that quarter. We have reached the end of the first quarter of the fourth annual Garden State Bowl. The score, Tennessee 13, Wisconsin 7. We'll return after these messages. And with a second down and 10 at the 50-yard line, Cole has gone to the air six times. He's completed two, 52 yards. Second down and 10, shotgun formation. Good protection. And a fine bit of defensive reaction. Troy King. Received the pass, and a fine play by tackle Chris Wampler, a junior out of Lenore City. Gain, three yards. Third down, seven for Wisconsin. And in with the play, Thad McFadden, the sophomore wide receiver out of Flint, Michigan. He'll come out wide to the right. Out with him is cornerback Lee Jenkins. The tight end, Nault, is split out to the right. from the shotgun. Cole wanted to get it to Michael Jones, but well off target. It's fourth down. I think we're going to see our first punt of the game, Al. Maybe. No, I think we will. 
David Greenwood. David Greenwood is the Wisconsin punter. He averages just a bit over 37 yards. Willie Galt is back at the 10-yard line to the right for Tennessee. He just joined us. Tennessee is leading 13 to 7. Fair catch. Didn't get as far as Galt. At the 19, 20 yard line, perhaps Bill Bates, a defensive back, fielded that punt. So uh, Tennessee has another opportunity to move the football, this time from the Tennessee 20. And an awfully big defensive series right now for the Badgers because Tennessee thinks they can move the ball and they have moved it. Now what Wisconsin wants to do is to begin to take charge on defense. Let's see if it happens. Tolls is the fullback. Barry, the tailback. Barry gets about four yards. Good defensive play by linebacker Jody O'Donnell, junior from Lockport, Illinois. We've seen Tennessee use that one reverse coming back with Hancock, but here's the kind of situation where you're so concerned about the pass, the screen play. Linebackers right now should be looking for possible screen pass to either side. Miller is wide right, Hancock to the left on second down six at the Tennessee 24. This is Mike Miller for a first down at the Tennessee 32. A change at linebacker, Borland has been replaced by Jim Melka, a sophomore out of West Allis. First down, Tennessee at the volunteer 32 yard line, 33 yard line. And I did not see the penalty flag, but there was a penalty indication of personal foul against Wisconsin. Costly. The ball comes out to near midfield at the 47 yard line. Face mask penalty, says referee Ted Humphrey. 13-25 left to play in the first half. Tennessee leading 13-7. Hancock comes to the left. Willie Gold is off to the right. The Volunteers have already racked up 10 first down. Tight end Cooper in motion. The screen. And very well defended. Willie Galt was on the receiving end of the pass. An excellent defensive play by Matt Vandenboom, Jim Melka, and Dave Leveni. This is a kind of a tough pass to throw. Every quarterback likes to make that, what we like to think about as a classic sideline pass. It's a tough one, but it sure was covered. That Wisconsin team pursues and pursues extremely well. If anything, a loss of a yard. Second down, 11. That was almost intercepted. Tim Crumry. Knocked down by Tim Crumry. Crumry batted it down, and so Tennessee is faced with a third down and 11. Now we... I'm sorry, Ray. Go ahead. I'm just wondering now if they're going to challenge that secondary again. Now, they've been throwing at Greenwood. They've been throwing at Vandenboom. They have not been burned as yet. Again, the kind of situation that seems to be calling for it. Wide receiver to the right. That's Willie Gall. Two wide receivers to the left. Third down and 11 play. Big rush. saying there was a receiver over there. I did not see a penalty flag down. I... He was ruled to have been down before the pass was thrown in the grasp of Guy Bolio. And for the first time today, the Wisconsin Badgers have taken charge. Now, the quarterback here is in trouble. He's fake. He had already faked that draw. A big rush coming in. And one thing that Dave McLean said, he's got some underrated people. Shoemate, Sims, Crumray, we all know about. But that was a great charge. Cole quit the punt, and he's an outstanding punter. Oh, did he hit that one. McFadden all the way back at the nine-yard line. A good run back and a penalty flag. Another flag. 
Might be a clipping penalty. Now, Colquitt, who, by the way, is a nephew of the Steelers' Craig Colquitt, averaged just a shade under 44 yards per punt. That time, Al, 61 yards. Excellent. But a clipping penalty now is going to hurt Wisconsin. Let's see if we can pick up that clipping penalty. McFadden takes the football. Now, actually, the coverage wasn't near him. There it is, right there. So the ball goes back inside the 10 to the eight yard line. And quarterback Jess Cole and his offensive teammates have a big task. Trailing 13 to seven, 12.05 left to play in the first half. First down Wisconsin at the Badger eight. Man, it's impressed me how Tennessee is number 92, Reggie White, he's just a sophomore. We'll return to the Garden State Bowl with Tennessee leading 13 to seven after these messages defense with Reggie White and Leonard Jackson leading the defensive charge. It's going to bring up a third down and about six. That was the young man I was talking about, number 92. He's a sophomore. He's 6'5". He's 256 pounds. He moves across that line very well. Now, he's the kind of fellow, because he's young and aggressive, that possibly the trap play works against. Off to the left, number 22, is Marvin Neal. To the right is Michael Jones. Now, was the defender drawn offside? Tennessee, of course, points to Wisconsin. Wisconsin points to Tennessee. Let's take a look at it and see if it was an offside. It looked like uh, Tennessee might have moved just a bit. So the five yard in penalty will mean it's third down and one away from a first down. And there was a close up look at quarterback Jess Cole. So Wisconsin now will go into their short yardage offense. 1045 left in the first half. Tennessee leading 13 to 7. Full house backfield. Mohat First down and then some out to the 22-yard line. First down, Wisconsin. Number 11 for the Badgers. Actually, for the first time today, both defensively in the last series and offensively in this series, have I seen the uh, offensive and defensive lines of the Wisconsin Badgers beginning to take a bit of the charge of that line of scrimmage. Neal and Jones are off to the left. The quarterback just pulled. a little bit slippery there and Cole limited to about a two yard gain. Now he had his tailback Troy King trailing the play but I don't think he really wanted to pitch to him. He hasn't really tried as yet. That's Jesse Cole. He hasn't tried as yet to hit something quick over the middle. We thought earlier he would go to uh, Jeff North. Let's see. They're playing it so tight at that line of scrimmage it's very tough to run against the Tennessee defense. So out of the shotgun formation, second down and eight. And Cole struggles out, and a late flag went flying as the run went to the 31-yard line, a yard shy of a first down. And uh, the Badgers fullback Dave Mohap signals it's against Wisconsin. If so, it'll be another, Wis or against Tennessee, it'll be another Wisconsin first down. Might have been a late hit, Ray. That was a play. It was no broken play. The quarterback intended to run as soon as he got the football. Five, ten, a 15-yarder gets the Badgers out to their own 46. Four penalties against Tennessee for 56 yards. And in with the play selection, Marvin Neal. Incidentally, at halftime today, what I am told by those who know will be Truly a spectacular halftime show. First and 10, Wisconsin at the Badger 46 yard line. Cole still has it. Gets two yards to the 48. 
Pat Scanlon, are you still along the sidelines? You've been able to listen to any of the information being passed along by assistant coaches to the players? I'm here with Dennis Phillips of the Citizens Watch Company, and Dennis has a presentation for us. On behalf of the Citizen Watch Company, we'd like to present to all the players the official watch of the Garden State Bowl. Thank you very much, Dennis. I'm sure they'll all appreciate it. Back to the action. All right. Thank you, Pat. Second down, eight, Wisconsin, Badger, 48-yard line. Look, that was interference on cornerback Lee Jenkins. In fact, three officials spotted it at almost the same instant. This is as hard a hitting football game, Ray, as I've seen in a long time. That Tennessee team is coming off the line of scrimmage. They popping, the linebackers, the way they're moving across, they are really aggressive. So a face mask penalty cost yep. Tennessee 15. Now pass interference brings the Badgers to the Wisconsin, or to the Tennessee 38-yard line. 8.20 left to play in the first half and the clock running. Neal goes wide to the left. Michael Jones is off to the right. seen him today. Junior out of Macon, Georgia. And gained at most about two yards to the 36-yard line. Now McFadden will replace Neal as a wide receiver. Reggie White, the young man, Al, you were talking about earlier that has the very quick moves. The sophomore out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, made the play for Tennessee. Coming from that defensive tackle position, he's making his charge, and then he's moving out with the play. Second down eight, two receivers wide out to the left, Jones and McFadden. This is Mohat struggling to the 32-yard line, and Wisconsin will have a third down and four. Such a pretty play. It's a subtle kind of a play. The center goes one way, the guard, Joyce, pulls, and he traps. The young lady from Tennessee. She just now recognized that she was on television. The Badgers asked for a timeout. Jess Cole wants to talk with the head man, Dave McLean, and staff. And so, from the Garden State Bowl in Giant Stadium at East Rutherford, New Jersey. is being young and in college and in the band and at a bowl game. I'll take all four. <laughs> Third and four, Wisconsin, Tennessee, 32-yard line. Seven minutes left to play in the first half. The fake was to Davis. Almost intercepted by defensive end Brian Ingram, who was dropping off in pass coverage. Fourth down. Now, th that's a situation where this tough defense, it's hitting in the line, but the end, Brian Ingram plays an end or he plays a linebacker. Here he had the responsibility of playing the pass and made a good play. Fourth down. Punt formation time for David Greenwood. Now, Tennessee has no one deep. to the left out of bounds at the 13 yard line Greenwood does his job well so Tennessee will have six minutes and 46 seconds remaining in the first half Tennessee leading 13 to 7 Pat Scanlon where are you as the volunteer offense takes the field now I had a few comments previously from center T uh, Lee North the all SEC center he's going up against all American Badger nose guard Tim Crumry he says Crumry's strength has surprised him today and not surprisingly, Crumry is the best nose guard that North has faced all season. Back to the action. Thank you, Pat. Now, will Tennessee play it conservative, or will Alatori put it in the air? Alatori, 10 of 19 so far, 103 yards. At 
the senior All-American football team will be revealed from the Tangerine Bowl on Ms. Lou. Alatori hit it well. Hancock. Oh, beautiful ball handling. And Hancock worked himself just enough away from Bandon Boom to haul it in at the 48-yard line of Wisconsin. Well, they're both putting out a great showing, Alatori and Hancock. They're going into the same spot. You keep thinking somebody's going to go for that football. Play action, as you called it. They were tackling the, the fullback, but he put the ball up in the air. I guess they're not going to play it conservatively, Ray. First down, Tennessee, Wisconsin 48. Hancock lost his footing. As a result, it will be second down 10, and a Badger is down. Number 76, defensive lineman, senior Mark Shoemate, is down on the artificial turf here at Giant Stadium. When play resumes, Willie Galt will have been the messenger. So, with 6-17 left to play in the first half, fourth annual Garden State Bowl, Tennessee leading 13-7. We'll be back after these messages. Here's Tennessee's outstanding punter, Jimmy Colquitt, the nephew of Craig Colquitt, who kicks for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Right now, Tennessee, second down and 10, 48-yard line of Wisconsin. New tailback, Randall Morris, number 12. Alatori, good protection. Short game, and it was Morris who just checked into the lineup who caught the pass for a gain of about five. And Tennessee will have a third and five as we look along the volunteer bench. Come on, my dad. Hi, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> that was Leonard Jackson, Tennessee's middle guard, sending greetings. Hancock is wide to the left. 43 left to play first half. This is for Hancock. Touchdown! One thing Dave McLean said, they cannot simulate the speed that Tennessee has. He ran into the teeth of it again. Two of the best of the Badgers, and they beat it. Incredible speed, and by the way, Alatori has thrown that football he pretty can, well. He can air it out, can't it? Isn't that beautiful? 44 yards, touchdown. Tennessee leads 19 to 7. And Fuad Reves will try to make it 20. But before that happens, Tennessee has to take a timeout. For whatever reason, the holder, Jeff Olszewski, said, I'm not ready. So a Tennessee timeout. Alatori has completed 13 of 23 passes for 190 yards. In the first half still has five and a half minutes remaining. Play calling, Ray, has been excellent. He's discouraging that defensive line by first coming with the short pass. As you'll notice, really as large a pass as long a pass as that was, he, was, he wasn't even touched in that backfield, so the quarterback had plenty of time. The fans here for the fourth annual Garden State Bowl reacting to the fact that two of the finest conferences in the country have sent their representatives here to play in Wisconsin and Tennessee and a most appreciative throng here at Giant Stadium. Now there's been a change in thinking. Tennessee is going for a two-point conversion instead of the one point. Dave McLean said if he has to throw against the, the volunteers of Tennessee, he doesn't think he can beat them. Now, that's an interesting comment because when you start falling behind by the number of points that they're behind, it may indicate they're going to have to put it up. So Tennessee will try to make the score 21 rather than 20 to 7. Alatori at quarterback.
differentiate between the defender, Mike L. Kofer. He's known as Stop Kofer. The young man who caught the two-point conversion is known as Go Kofer. And so, Tennessee, 21. Wisconsin, 7. We'll return to the Garden State Bowl after these messages. And the last time he fielded a kickoff, he had an excellent run back to near midfield. On his left is Gerald Green. Reves to kick off. Troy King is the other returner for Wisconsin. McFadden at the 11. To the 27 yard line. Pat Scanlon. You have Phil Hancock with you? This is Anthony Hancock who just hauled down his sixth touchdown pass of the year. Johnny Major just looked over and told him, good catch. What was the route you ran? It was just a regular post pattern, that's all. <laughs> it doesn't help to have that world-class sprinter speed either, does it? Well, it helps a little bit. <laughs> Thanks very much. Let's go back to the action. Okay, Pat. First down, Wisconsin. Badger 27-yard line. Mohap. No more than about three yards. Five minutes and a couple of seconds left to play in the first half. Then will come a spectacular halftime show and then the second half fireworks. This is the time of the football game when a team like the Badgers down by two touchdowns are going to have to be patient. And the wrong thing to do is to put it up too quickly. See if you can control the line of scrimmage. See if you can run the football. Right now it looks like it's going to be tough because Tennessee is defending against the run. was almost picked off by linebacker Lamont Holt Jeffers. It will be third down and seven. Here is where the turnovers really break a football game wide open, and they almost did it right there. Let's take a look at that defense. There, uh, there's uh, Jeffers. Didn't have the greatest hands, but he's in super position. Third down and seven. Troy King checks in at the tailback spot. And it'll be Wisconsin out of the shotgun formation on third and seven. Four-man rush, penalty flag down. Good completion to Nault, the tight end, but remember, a flag is down near the line of scrimmage or behind it. It's against Tennessee, signals one of the Wisconsin players. If so, this will put Wisconsin in pretty good position. Offside, Tennessee. Offsides First. against Tennessee decline. First down, Wisconsin at the Badger 48-yard line. Take a look at it again. Can't see the play, a perfect pass. It really wasn't. He was in a very weak position to throw the football, so he must have an awfully strong arm. Brian Ingram made the tackle, but not before Wisconsin picks up a first down at the Wisconsin 48-yard line. <laughs> I have never seen mom greeted off a cast on a lake. Cole to the air on first down. Great interception by Lee Jenkins. Jenkins cut in front of the intended receiver, Craig Frederick, the tight end. So Wisconsin turns it over. Tennessee has it at the, at the volunteer 24-yard line. And with 4.09 to go, we're going to see that football in the air. He never did see Jenkins coming over. The one thing you did not want to have happen with 4.09, uh, Wisconsin didn't want to have happen with this interception. It wouldn't surprise me right now if Tennessee marks the field. Cole, 5 of 13, but two interceptions. And cock in motion. This is the new tailback, Randall Morris, a sophomore out of Long Beach, California. <laughs> That's the young man who wrote on his cast, Hi, Mom. In case there were no microphone handy, he wanted 
be sure, I guess, to get the message across. Morris picked up six yards, second and four at the Tennessee 30. Late in the first half, 335, 335 remaining first half. Hancock is the man in motion. This is Morris again. Appears to be a yard short of the first down at the Tennessee 33, where Kyle Borland made the stop for Wisconsin. You know, all the action isn't really on the field all the time. Occasionally, you see a... Watch this. Uh, really? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? Twice now, Tennessee has pitched to the left side. Both times, Alatori faked the roll to the right side, and he was wide open both times if he wanted to pull it down and run. Junior Kyle Borland, one of the Wisconsin linebackers, a junior from Fort Atkinson, Wisconsin, able to leave the field under his own power, but uh, he's been replaced in the lineup. For Tennessee, third and one, Tennessee 33-yard line. The clock starts to run again, less than three minutes remaining in the first half. Tennessee leading 21 to seven. Steve Alatori didn't like what he saw in the way of the defensive alignment, and that'll cost Tennessee a timeout. If Steve was thinking about coming around this side on a quarterback keeper, he was right calling a timeout because the Badgers had that defense goal. Jim Melka, West Allis sophomore, replaced Borland at outside linebacker for Wisconsin. Olszewski, the reserve quarterback, was shielding us from Coach Johnny Majors. Tennessee has a third and one at the Tennessee 33. The clock stopped with 2.44 left in the first half. Galt is wide to the left. He'll be covered by Van Mansfield. Down run for Hancock, the wing back. So Hancock is a young man of many talents. Excellent receiver, good runner, and another Wisconsinite is down. Cornerback Ron Steverson. I think you remarked earlier that you can hear the pads popping clear up here. They are moving off that line of scrimmage. Everyone, uh, the linebackers are charging up the. Again, the offensive line, we've said so much about Wisconsin's offensive line, but the offensive line of Tennessee deserves a tremendous amount of credit. Pretty play. And Hancock came up limping. Mm. The player who made the tackle was number 47. Hancock, Dave Levenick made the first contact. And then in coming in to help out, Steverson came up limping. He's going to leave the game. Hancock left the game. Hancock, you ready? Back up, man. Back up. The run was good for a first down. At the Tennessee 40. Two and a half minutes left in the first half. Wide to the right. That number 88 is Mike Miller. Wide to the left, rather. A flea flicker. Play by Wisconsin. David Greenwood blitzing from his safety that spot. That is a magnificent play by David Greenwood. Now, when he saw that play developing, he was out of position. He did not anticipate that kind of a pass coming from his safety position. Great play. The old flea flicker just got fleed. <laughs> Loss on the play. 10 yards, second and 20 at the Tennessee 30. Wide open. Oh, and Vandenboom got there in a hurry. He had a long, long way to go to reach Willie Galt, but he got there. Now you know why they call him the Boomer. 
third down and 20 at the Tennessee 30 148 left to play in the first half and a cast of at least hundreds awaiting the signal to put on a halftime show. Coming up a third and 20 play and all sorts of false moves. I think Tennessee expects it'll be a legal procedure. Hit ball foul, false start, offense. Five yard penalty, it'll be now third and 25. And here's that position where we say they have not been conservative. The one thing that Alatori obviously doesn't want is to give them with the Badgers with one minute and 48 seconds another shot way down deep in the Tennessee territory. So the offense, the defensive line is going to be coming. You may see a blitz. Let's watch those wise folks again. Mike Miller, Anthony Hancock, Willie Galt are all split out. This is Alan Coles, and he gets about 11 yards out of that play. I'll take that back. He didn't get anything out of the play. He wound up at the line of scrimmage thanks to great defense by Wisconsin and coming up limping. Number 78, Chris Oswald, a sophomore from Wausau, comes up limping. So this game is taking a, a heavy toll of both teams. Jimmy Cole quit the punt. Just over a minute left to play in the half. Watching this man punt is watching a, a ballet. The way that leg is extended is incredible. Thad McFadden is the deep return man for Wisconsin. Tennessee taking advantage of all the seconds that it can. McFadden, fair catch, and wisely runs away from it. And with only 48 seconds left in the half, Wisconsin will have it at the Wisconsin 21. Incidentally, Giant Stadium is only a part of this vast and impressive sports complex. Just to give you an idea of the activities coming up at the, at the arena, the Brendan Byrne Arena, the 15th through the 20th of this month, Women's Professional Tennis Championships, Chrissy Everett Lloyd, Martina Navratilova, Tracy Austin, Andrea Yeager, and so forth. College basketball, number one, North Carolina, number two, Kentucky, on December 26th. Wow, that's just a, a partial list of the events coming up in the near future. This is Jess Cole running a quarterback draw, and was he down? The officials say he was down before the fumble. Wisconsin has had trouble today in controlling the football. They've been losing it by way of interceptions, and fumbles. Now Wisconsin takes a timeout with 34 seconds. Left in the first half. Cole picked up about three yards on that quarterback draw. Dave McLean turning around the among the events coming up in Ms. Lou in the uh, upcoming months. April from brilliant, beautiful Hilton Head, South Carolina. Women's professional golf. The CPC tournament. 20th anniversary of the Mislu Television Network. I'm starting to say about the success that Dave McLean has had in turning around this Wisconsin program. First bowl appearance by the Badgers since that memorable battle when Ron Vander Kellen was the Badger quarterback against Southern Cal in the Rose Bowl. Remember that one? Oh, it was a great one. Wow. And that of course for great. Tennessee, Johnny Majors in his fifth year and the volunteers making their presence known yet another time. Second and seven, Wisconsin at the Wisconsin 25 from the shotgun formation. Cole, Neal couldn't quite hold on. He took a big hit and now Neal is down. We've seen a few hitters out there, but there are none that hit much harder than Lamont Jeffers and he was coming and he's the fellow that got to Neal. Let's take a look at this from the low. We were, uh, Ray and I have been talking about how they're hitting down there. I can tell you they're hitting. So Marvin Neal, a Peoria, Illinois, senior receiver is receiving attention. Cole has been able to complete but five of 14 passes for 86 yards 
He's had two picked off. Well, fortunately, Neal's able to come off under his own power. Third down and seven, Wisconsin. 29 seconds left in the first half. McFadden comes off to the right. He'll be working against Lee Jenkins, the cornerback on this side. In fact, double coverage. From the shotgun, three-man rush. And Michael Jones, the intended receiver, and that one appeared to hang quite a bit. Who do you think the punt return man is, Ray? This is going to be an interesting one. Here's an easy catch. Now picture yourself surrounded by folks with orange jerseys. Simple catch, really. Kind of happy it wasn't me. The name is Galt. Willie Galt, number 26. He's run one back for 66 yards this year, a putt. Look at this reach in here. All right, now back live, Greenwood punting. This is Willie Galt at the Tennessee 27, back to the 25. Good coverage. <laughs> Excellent coverage by the Wisconsin special team led by Curtis Richardson. And another Badger is down. 45-yard punt. Shaken up for Wisconsin offensive guard Mike Mark Subak the thing that limping off the field Ray, the thing I respect so much about college football and college coaches they're so concerned about their athlete they've been athletes there have been so many great rules changes to try to avoid the knee injury the crackback block has been eliminated they cannot go down and hit at the knees excellent uh, excellent rule change first down at the Tennessee 28 yard line this is their tailback, Randall Morris, who did not start the game, but has been in the last two series and carries on what proves to be the final play of the first half. And the volunteer fans at Giant Stadium roar their approval as they look at the scoreboard. Tennessee 21, Wisconsin 7. Let's take a look at that kickoff return. It's a Sony halftime highlight. Look at Willie Galt go. Willie Galt, Olympic sprinter speed. He was part of a shuttle hurdle relay team down in Tennessee, which broke a world's record. Willie Galt, Anthony Hancock, Darrell Wilson, and Mike Miller, all part of the Tennessee Volunteer football team, also a part of that shuttle hurdle relay team that broke the world's record, beating the Pioneer Track Club. Thad McFadden of Wisconsin. He has a hole. A super run back by McFadden. Terry Daniels finally made the tackle, but Wisconsin comes out firing now. A 45 yard run back. Randy Wright, the junior from St. Charles, Illinois, a transfer from Notre Dame, a transferee from Notre Dame, will be the Wisconsin quarterback. He is a young man who led the Badgers to their victory over Minnesota in their closing regular season game. Randy Wright. This is Chucky Davis. Driving for five yards, and a penalty flag went flying. At the end of the run, a flag went flying about two yards beyond the runner, Chucky Davis. It was against Wisconsin. We continue to see a very interesting defense being used by the uh, volunteers of Tennessee. I don't think I have seen a linebacker in a four-point position. We're seeing that four men at the line of scrimmage. Uh, either side, the defensive end at either side could drop off. We're really seeing a variation, an unusual stack type defensive line. We'll watch to see how that linebacker is doing. Still first down. A clipping penalty moves the Badgers back to their 40 yard line where it will be first down and 20. Wide to the left goes Marvin Neal. To the right, Michael Jones. Randy Wright from the shotgun formation. Awaiting the snap from Ron Bersnick. Chucky Davis and 
and very little gain, if any. Chucky Davis is a junior tailback out of Macon, Georgia. At this point, the shotgun has been very ineffective. The Tennessee defensive line, when they see the quarterback and the shotgun, are really teeing off and going after the passer. Craig Frederick checks in at tight end, number 37. McFadden goes left. Michael Jones goes left. Second down, 19. Two wide receivers to the left. Randy Wright. Michael Jones couldn't hold on at the 35-yard line. But that young man has a good arm, Al. He can throw. There they are, Jones and McFadden. Let's take another look at this now with two wide fast men to the outside. You'll see a bump coming over the middle. He had his man beat, Randy Wright, just a little bit high. Third Show. and 19 at the Wisconsin 41. Neal and Jones again are wide to the left. I formation. He stepped out of bounds at the 25-yard line of Tennessee. And, oh, did Randy Wright get hit by Reg Reggie White. Let's take another look at this. Now, Reggie White, we're not going to see it. There comes 92. He is popping. The interception, and then he steps out of bounds almost immediately. Right there. That's the fourth Wisconsin turnover. A fumble and three interceptions. So Tennessee takes over at the Volunteer 25. Now that's what we were talking about, the need for patience, really. They needed to move that football. They put it up in the air, and now they've turned it over again. When the ball is put in play, Tennessee will have James Berry at tailback, Doug Furness at fullback, Steve Alatore will be the quarterback. The wide receivers will be Willie Galt and Anthony Hancock. The tight end will be Mike Coker. Galt to the right, working against Mansfield. Hancock to the left, working against Clint Sin. Fumble. got it back. Loss of a yard or so. It'll be second down and about 12. Happens so often. Quarterback is pulling out. Shouldn't really be happening here because he's been working with North all day, but never really got the handle on the football and very fortunately recovered. Second down, 11. Tennessee, 24. Second half just underway. Tennessee leading 21 to 7. Cooper in motion. Mike Miller, the intended receiver, lost his footing, and so the pass incomplete. It'll be third down and 11. Darrell Wilson, a wide receiver out of Bristol, Virginia, number 87, checks into the lineup, his foot to the left. Galt to the right, Hancock to the right, third and 11. Tennessee at the Tennessee 24. And a loss back to the 20-yard line. Darrell Sims led the defensive charge. Hunt formation time for Tennessee. That means Jimmy Colquitt. And for Wisconsin, Thad McFadden will be the deep returner. 13 minutes left to play, third quarter. This is the part of the football game that Tennessee puts so much emphasis on. That's the kicking game. Let's see where this one goes. Oh, beautiful kick. McFadden at the Wisconsin 36. 
Dodgers wind up in good position at their own 44-yard line. With Randy Wright at quarterback. 43-yard punt by Jimmy Colquitt. Will return after these messages. The third quarter, Tennessee leading 21-7. Randy Wright has taken over at quarterback. Leonard Jackson and Wright is limited to a gain of about a yard. It'll be second down nine. Well, nothing like running out of bounds in front of your own coach, Al. Good way <laughs> to get instructions. Picked up two yards, That's second it. down eight. The Tennessee defensive line is pursuing extremely well. The secondary is staying right on top of those receivers. It's making it very difficult. It's a excellently played defensive game by Tennessee. From the shotgun formation, second down eight. Here comes the pressure. Oh! Bill Bates blitzing. Wright never saw him. It is ruled no fumble, but a big loss and a tremendous hit on Randy Wright. Linebacker comes up the middle. Bill Bates comes from the outside from the safety. We're first taking a look at Reggie White now. Reggie's fighting it to the inside. You saw a linebacker looping to the inside, and then you see number 40, who comes from that safety position. Loss of seven yards. Well, there comes Bates now, right there. there it is. Back live, third and 16. Mohap, I'm sorry, new fullback, Gerald Green. Wisconsin elects to play it safe because they have a chance here now to defend Tennessee deep, given a good punt by Greenwood. Willie Galt, who returned a kickoff for a touchdown on a run of 87 yards, is the deep returner for Tennessee. There's Galt. Tennessee 16. Fumble. So Greenwood does his job. Tennessee will have to start from deep in volunteer territory. 39 yard punt. 11.02 left to play, third quarter. The third quarter has been scoreless so far. The score Tennessee 21, Wisconsin 7. We'll return after these messages from your lead right here on Ms. Lou. Stiff Wisconsin defense. No gain. Led by Tim Crumry, the junior middle guard, who has received so many postseason honors. And Tim Crumry has been having an afternoon where he's getting hit not only by the center, but on one occasion it might be Bill Mayo, number 67. On another occasion, he's getting hit by David James. And he's at least double teamed just about every play. Wide receiver out to the left. Mike Miller, second and ten, Tennessee 17-yard line. This is Hancock, and great reaction by the Wisconsin defense, and no gain, and there goes a penalty flag. A flag as Hancock was tackled at around the 18-yard line. Personal foul against Wisconsin. And they're calling this a late hit now. Crumry is coming. It looks like he flips over the top of him. No, that's not Crumry. I'm sorry. That is uh, Daryl Sims coming from the offside. At any rate, the penalty is called and it moves Tennessee. Dead ball foul. Defense. Late hit. First down. So first down, Tennessee at the Tennessee 32-yard line. Hancock to the left. High formation this time for the Volunteers. Almost caught 
by golf although it had been tipped and then almost intercepted Pat Scanlon you're along the sidelines with whom this is Tennessee's junior free safety Billy Bates the man who just got to quarterback Randy White the last series Billy, what do you have to do against Wright as opposed to the Badger quarterback, Just Cole, in the first quarter, the first well, half? Well, of course, you know, us being ahead has really given us a chance. They're, uh, they're having to throw the ball, try to catch up, and uh, we're just trying to break on the ball. There's really no difference in the two. I, I, I suppose that the, that the one they got in now has got a better arm. That's what he's in there. Back to the action. Alatori somehow completed the pass, but it was ruled that he was down inside the 20-yard line. Chris Oswald, Mark Shoemate, were amongst the defenders who got to the quarterback, and he's a magician even to have gotten out of that, even though it, it, it turned out it didn't mean anything, Al. It sure is. Now, they've changed their game plan just a little bit, and it's much too early in the football game to do that. Let's take another look at it. Now, he gets hit several times. There's Sims coming. Got a blitz from one side. Here he comes with a high shot and still gets out of it. Good call. I think protecting the quarterback is all important. Tennessee has a new tailback, Chuck Coleman, sophomore out of Louisville, Kentucky, number 35. Out of Torrey. Oh. Gets a little bit of yardage to the Tennessee 21-yard line, but it's going to be fourth down, and Wisconsin now playing very, very aggressively on the defense. The thing they've been unable to do and maybe we'll see it in this next series. They really have been unable to run the football. Now, that's kind of a surprise. Looking at that offensive line, you would think they'd be able to generate some running attack. Cole quit to punt. Thad McFadden deep to receive. 9.40 left to play third quarter. Tennessee leading 21 to 7. Oh, beautiful punt. Beautiful punt. McFadden at the Badger 22. To the 37. Up to this point, Ray Alatori has now been dropped for 36 yards, for minus 36 yards. So that's an indication that this Badger uh, defensive unit is really coming on. Now let's see if the Wisconsin offense can get on track under the quarterbacking of Randy Wright. His wide receiver will be Michael Jones, number 82 to the left. Marvin Neal, number 22, also to the left. to the tailback Chucky Davis it was tipped away by Bill Bates intended for Neal but there was also another defender there and a Tennessee defender leaves the field with an injured hand Mike Terry a defensive one of the uh, Tennessee defensive players left holding his arm so for Wisconsin, after the pass was incomplete, Randy Wright calls the signals in the huddle on the second and 10 from the Wisconsin 37-yard line. Johnny Majors talking with his Tennessee offensive unit along the sideline. Here comes the pressure. McFadden could not hold on at midfield. But I just have the feeling now that Wright is going to hit one here because he throws very well. It's a strong arm. Yes, he does. And yet that defensive unit that we're giving so much credit to, they're playing it so beautifully. On the running situations, they're playing the perfect defense for the run. When they figure it's going to be passing, watch that linebacker coming. They play a three-man line. Suddenly it turned in, turns into a seven-man rush. So now for Wisconsin, third and ten at the Badger 37. Michael Jones to the right. Neal goes to the left. Here's the time to watch for Bill Bates. He makes some big plays in that safety position. Shotgun formation. Tennessee was waiting. Reggie White. What a outstanding sophomore lineman, number 92. They're going to be picking an outstanding offense and defensive players. And player right now on Tennessee would be between Reggie White and I think Jeffers, who's number 47, also playing an awfully fine defensive game. As Wisconsin goes into punt formation with David Greenwood, Pat Scanlon, can you tell us when we get an opportunity here what Johnny Majors basically was telling his offensive players along the sideline? Willie Galt, fair catch, Tennessee, 24-yard line. 
Pat Scanlon, what do you expect from the Volunteers offensively? After that last offensive series for Tennessee, Johnny Majors huddled the entire offense. He told them, hey, we're running around in circles. We have to get back in the game mentally to protect that 21-7 lead. Let's see if they do it now. Back to Ray. I, I think that's an excellent comment, Pat. I, I can't help but think that Johnny had to be telling them that. They were standing around. It was the worst series Tennessee had the entire football game. They've looked so outstanding. This is no time for them to let up because the Badgers can come back. Barry is back at tailback for Tennessee. Barry trying to get outside. Went out of bounds at the 25-yard line. There's a flag down at the 20. Larry Sperlin made the defensive play for Wisconsin. Penalty against Tennessee. Here's another one of those times when I'm sure the Badgers will be looking for, hopefully they'll be looking for Anthony Hancock. Now they went wide to the right side and they put Hancock to the close end of the football field. They might look for him to come back on that reverse. It's a big open field to the side. Offense. Illegal use Still of hands. Ten yard penalty. First and 20. Tennessee 15 yard line. Incidentally, Wisconsin so far in the second half has managed just four yards total offense. There's Hancock. There's Hancock. And he gets, oh, about 10, 13 yards out to the 26-yard line. That's an awfully good football player, Ray. They were beautiful moves he made there. He got himself clear, and then he continue to negotiate knowing exactly where the defense was coming from. Now Hancock will stay in the game but Willie Galt will be another wide receiver. So Hancock will go wide right. Willie Galt splits left. Second down nine at the Tennessee 26. This is Barry the tailback. Looks like it's enough for a first down at the Tennessee 35. Now, really, again, without noticing it, Hancock far right wide, Gold split to the left side. Linebackers are taking deep drops. Secondary is taking the deep drop, so they come underneath. A very well conceived football play. Let's take another look at that. Elatory. Now, we're going to be picking an offensive player of the day, too, and it's going to be hopefully tough to pick one here. Good play. First down, Tennessee, Tennessee 35, midway third quarter, 21 to 7, Tennessee leading over Wisconsin. The fake was to Barry, and down goes Alatori again. Tim Crumry sacking the quarterback. Loss on the play, eight yards. Coming up, second down, 18. Into the game, Lenny Taylor. We talked about Crumry. Well, here's another indication of the strength of the man. And again, Alatori is a strong kid himself. Although you don't take on Crumry. Alatori has completed 16 of 29, 215 yards. A screen. And not quite enough for. Mike Miller was the receiver on the play. Doesn't have enough for a first down, but gets it out to the Tennessee 42-yard line. Again, another very pretty play. Great execution. That line made their hit, broke to the outside, and there was Gold right behind it. They almost broke that one. New fullback, Doug Furness left the game. Alan Coles replaces him. Third down, three. Barry. Running through tackles and a first down at the Wisconsin 49-yard line where David Greenwood makes a tackle after a gain of 16. Let's look at this from the end zone one more time. The flow, the offensive blocking, the guard pulling, the back making the next in block, very cutting to the inside. Tennessee is doing it all so well. Greenwood comes up 
helping out on the play. First Big down, Tennessee, and injured on the play, Alan Tolles, who just came into the lineup at fullback prior to the last play. He'll be replaced by Doug Furness, the junior, out of Miami, Oklahoma, and Tennessee is forced to take a timeout. And so, let the Garden State. Anthony Hancock wide to the left. Bootleg out of Torrey. Fumble out of bounds. There's a play we commented on earlier. It was going in the other direction the last time. He faked twice to his right, and took a look to the outside, knew it was going to be open eventually, and there he pulled it down. He was ruled to have been down prior to the fumble, so it is not a first down. It is second and about a foot. Second and about a foot. The field goal kicker gets ready. Rebe. Second down, less than a yard for a first down. Barry. He gets the first down down to the 35-yard line. Looks like the ball players are listening to Johnny Majors. Another excellent drive by Tennessee. They're doing it all. They're pitching it. They're rolling out, bootlegging it. They're throwing the ball extremely well. They're consuming time. It's, it's the series that the Badgers absolutely must stop where the full football game is over. Four minutes left to play in the third quarter as Tennessee is marched to its 17th first down of the game. And Johnny Majors looks on along the sidelines, the head coach of the Volunteers. This is a first and ten play. Alatori might be making a change at the line of scrimmage. There goes his big fullback, Furness, for about three yards before he runs into linebacker Larry Sperlin. Gain on the play, three yards. Second down, seven. Defensive changes. Vandenboom was getting a brief rest. Matt Vandenboom, he checked back in, number 39. Wilson is the receiver wide to the right, Hancock to the left. Second down, seven. This is Wilson at the 18-yard line, and Tennessee has a beautiful drive underway. David Greenwood can hit as hard as anybody in that secondary. Let's take a, a look at this. He comes up and is really popping amazingly. The young man, Willie Galt, does not drop the football. Let's take another look at this. One of those tender moments in sports. Back live, out of Torrey to Barry. Ooh, what a hit at the 16-yard line by Larry Sperlin. Now, defensively, a change. Chris Oswald, sophomore defensive lineman from Wausau, checks into the lineup. Also, number 55. Number 55 for Wisconsin. Russ Fields, a linebacker from Chicago Heights, Illinois. Second and eight, Tennessee. 16-yard line of Wisconsin. Late in the third quarter, Tennessee leading 21-7. Might have been a 100-yard return for a touchdown. He's been looking at that for that one all day. Uh, he knew they were going to be coming over the middle. Vandenboom, the boomer, was there, right in his hands. Missed it. He might have had a little bit of a tough time beating one player on the Tennessee offensive team. Alatori, 18 of 31, 246 yards. Right now, Tennessee faced with a third and eight at the Wisconsin 16 and a half yard line. 2-10 left to play third quarter as Alatori calls the signal. Barry could not quite hold on at the 10-yard line. And now it is time for Fuad Reves. Field goal attempt will be somewhere around the 34 or 35-yard distance. 2.05 left, third quarter. The holder, reserve quarterback, Jeff 
Oshevsky. It will be a 33-yard attempt. No. It is hooked to the left. Wisconsin holds. Now Wisconsin has been able to amount only four yards in total offense in the third quarter. We'll be back after these messages. Track, first and 10 at the Wisconsin 20-yard line. They've been doubling cover, covering um, uh, Michael Jones, so we might take a look at number 20, Thad McFadden. This is the tailback, Chucky Davis, picking his way for about six yards. Good gain on first down. Wisconsin has not been able to get good yardage consistently on first down. So second and four, a little bit less than four at the Wisconsin 26 and a half. Gerald Green, the junior fullback from Waukegan, Illinois. Marvin Neal's also in there. He just took Thad McFadden's place, number 22. Second down, three and a half. And a good first down plunge by Gerald Green before he runs into Brian Ingram. So the Badgers get a little something started. That's first down number 12 and the first of the second half for Wisconsin. And the third quarter rapidly winding down. Just over one minute left to play as the Badgers huddle around their quarterback Randy Wright. McFadden goes left. Michael Jones goes left. with a good catch and a first down at the Tennessee 41. Wasn't that a pretty catch? Now, here he is. He's a sophomore. He's 6'3". He's 234 pounds. Makes a nice move, a little one-hander. Not too shabby. So, Wisconsin. How about another look at this one, Ray? It's such a good play. <laughs> that was pretty quick. <laughs> yeah, I know he was quick, but not that quick. <laughs> First down, Wisconsin, Tennessee, 41-yard line. 35 seconds left in the third quarter. And here's the big fullback, Green. And Green gets about five yards on first down. So Wisconsin putting together its first drive of the second half, trailing by 21 to 7. We might have time for one more play in the third quarter. Maybe. We haven't seen Wisconsin go really to their backs as much as this defense seems to dictate. They're going to their wide receiver. They just went to their tight end. Coming out of the backfield, always a great asset. And Chucky Davis, I'm not sure if Chucky's in there, is a good receiver. Darryl Harder, number 23, sophomore strong safety from Memphis, was injured on that play, and one of the officials spotted it, hence the reason for the timeout. He's been replaced by Clyde Duncan, a sophomore out of Oxon Hill, Maryland. A couple of seconds left in the quarter. McFadden in motion. A keeper. And McFadden wound up with a football and a first down on the final play of the third quarter, all the way down to the Tennessee 25-yard line. So. The stage is set pretty well for the fourth quarter, and let's look at it again. This is a good fake to Chucky Davis into the line. It looked like the quarterback could keep it. Last minute, he makes the wise decision, takes it to the outside. Another wise decision right there. And first down, number 14 for Wisconsin. And a good drive by the Badgers as they trail at the end of three quarters. Tennessee 21, Wisconsin 7. Fourth quarter about to begin as the Badgers have picked up a first down at the Tennessee 25-yard line, responding to the quarterbacking of junior Randy Wright of St. Charles, Illinois, who transferred to Wisconsin from Notre Dame. Now, we were going to have two changes. Number 35, Troy King, will be the tailback. Number 22, Marvin Neal, will be a wide receiver. And number 28, Dave Mohap, will return to his starting fullback position and a first and 10 play coming up. Jones goes right. Neal comes left. Tight end Nolt is on the left side.
There's the big tight end, Nolt, at the seven-yard line. So Randy Wright is on target, and Wisconsin is on the move. Sure is. Now, he went into a defense that looked like it was prepared to catch Nolt coming over the middle. It was a 4-4 defense. He had plenty of time. There was no real rush, and he was able to hit him. Give any quarterback time, and he's going to be awfully tough. Big hit. That tight end is so important in offensive passing. So the Badger cheerleaders have something to cheer about. First and goal at Tennessee 7. McFadden in motion. And Mohap is stopped right at the line of scrimmage. See who's in the bottom of that pile. One Reggie White. Here's a situation where I'm sure Coach uh, McLean must wish that Johnny Williams were in this football game. John has a great deal more speed. When you don't have speed, you can defense that center. Next Saturday night on the Mislu Television Network, the Tangerine Bowl. Right now, second and goal to go, Wisconsin at the Tennessee Six. Touchdown grab, and I started to say it out. He was awfully lucky not to have an interception. It's going to be third and goal as we look at it again. Back live, third and goal. Six and a half yard line of Tennessee. McFadden goes to the right. Tight end. Nault is on the right. Touchdown, Nault. catches and the Wisconsin Badgers are back in the football game. Doran will try for the extra point. He will try for Wisconsin's 14th point out of a hold by quarterback Randy Wright. And point number 14 it is. 13 minutes and 40 seconds of potential action remain at the fourth annual Garden State Bowl. We'll be back after these mess at Haiti, preparing to kick off for the Badgers. And how many times you see, Al, when the, in this case, the offense does something, now the defense gets all fired up. Now the pressure is going to switch to this Tennessee offense to try and do something about the momentum. Absolutely. And there is Willie Galt. He has an 87-yard kickoff return to his credit today for a touchdown. 21-14, Tennessee leading. Oh, they want to keep it away from Galt. I think that was a reserve tight end, John Cook, who fielded that short kick. I guess they figure it's better that Tennessee has it at the 32 instead of having it maybe in the end zone. Not a bad idea. Let's see how this defense comes on now, Ray, because as you said, this is the time, and if they can pick it up, they can really have a football game. And now that two-point decision of Johnny Majors looms pretty big. It's 21-14. Uh, Alatori all the way at quarterback. Doug Furness is the fullback. This is Hancock. Well, one thing for sure, Tennessee's not going into the shell. David Greenwood put the hit on Hancock, but not before Tennessee moves out to its own 48-yard line for a first down. First down number 18 for the Volunteers. Willie Galt checks out of the lineup. Mike Miller replaces him. Hancock goes left. Miller comes to the short side. This is a tailback draw, and Barry is a first down before he runs into linebacker Jody O'Donnell. James Barry 
senior running back out of Natchez, Mississippi. Just an excellent offensive game plan. They stuck with it. They come back. They move the team to the wide side, and then they come with that draw up the middle. Great call. You think that hole is pretty good. I think I could gain about three. Barry, after that good run, is replaced at tailback by Randall Morris. First and ten play coming up at the Wisconsin 41-yard line. Morris, penalty flag goes flying. Preliminary signal would indicate a hold against Tennessee. This could be very harmful to the volunteer cause. Yep, holding penalty with 12.45 left in the game and Tennessee leading 21 to 14. Take a look at that rush now. They're moving off that ball. They've been going that way now for better than three quarters of a football game. Good drive, keeps that shoulder down, and the hitting is awfully strong, and there goes that fly. Tennessee has been Holy penalized six times. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. 67 yards in penalties against Tennessee. First down at the Tennessee 47. First and about 23. for Chuck Coleman who just went in a tailback and out of Torrey came within an eyelash of having one picked off. This time it was Clint Sims, junior defensive back out of East St. Louis, Illinois, who almost intercepted. It'll be second down and 23. Darrell Wilson brings in the play selection from the coaches to replace Mike Miller. Hancock will go left, working against Vaughn Mansfield, the corner corner back on the right. Overthrowing Hancock around the 35 yard line of Wisconsin. Now a very big third down coming up for Tennessee. Wisely the Badgers are double covering on Hancock. They have not been coming to this side where they're single coverage. The double coverage came kind of late. Now Michael Miller is coming back into the football game. I won't be at all surprised to see him since he may be getting one-on-one -on -one coverage to see Alatori go to Mike Miller. Miller and Galt will be the wide receivers, and Hancock stays in the game. No tight end. Third and 23. Willie Galt couldn't quite stretch long enough, but boy, was he wide open. Fourth down. Now that kicking game of Tennessee becomes so very important. Jimmy Coldquit, who has been averaging in the regular season almost 44 yards per punt, and that's a great average. He'll be punting to Thad McFadden. There's McFadden inside the 15-yard line of Wisconsin. Plenty of time left, 12 minutes, 19 seconds, Tennessee leading 21-14. Fair catch, McFadden, 14-yard line of Wisconsin. Now, the last time the Badgers had the football, Randy Wright moved them in for a touchdown. What will the plan call for now? We'll know very shortly what Randy Wright and company is going to do. 21-14, they're trailing Tennessee. We'll be back. I'm here with Ed Kefauver, the sales manager for the Lever Brothers Company, and Ed has a presentation for us. Thank you, Pat. On behalf of S.H.I.E.L.D., Extra Strength Deodorant Bar Soap, we are pleased to present this trophy for the most outstanding defensive player for the Garden State Bowl. And the winner of this award goes to Reggie White, number 92, from Tennessee. Thank you very much, Ed. Reggie White, the big sophomore from Chattanooga. Now back to Ray. Okay, Pat. Wisconsin went to the air, and Randy Wright threw for his tight end, Jeff Nault. Al, 
well, here's that time of the football game again where the interception looms so big. You're going to see that defensive line really coming. Smart move might be to come with a screen. Just try to nullify the rush. Second and ten. Tennessee defense led by defensive end Brian Ingram and right is dropped for no gain 15 yard line so now Wisconsin has to come up with a big third down play third and ten 92 Reggie White we said he's just a sophomore two more years to go moving toward that ball helping out Defensive MVP, and he deserves it. Wide to the right, Michael Jones and Thad McFadden. 11.25 left to play. Was there a delay of game? Could well have been. Yep, it's going to be third and 15. Defensive, defensive football players, Ray, just absolutely love this situation. You've got them up against the goal, goal line. They know they've got to throw the football. It looks like they've got them pretty well covered on the far side. The only place that looks like it might be open is that middle, and that's the most dangerous place to throw. So Gerald Green checks in at fullback. Third and 15 at the Wisconsin 10. Two wide receivers are off to the right again. Here's the big fullback green. Tennessee recovers quickly. Limits the game to five yards. So it is punt formation time. And Tennessee is going to get this football in excellent field position with about 11 minutes remaining. And the dangerous Willie Galt. We'll be back for the expected punt from David Greenwood. Greenwood stands at the one. Galt stands at the Tennessee 47. Beautiful kick to the Tennessee 31. He retreats. but a flag down might have gotten the face mask. 50-yard punt by Greenwood. Flag down at the Tennessee 31-yard line. We've said so much about cold quit, but when you think that Greenwood has been playing safety the entire game and puts a punt like that together, was it a face mask? Yeah, it kind of looked like it. Face mask, kicking team during the run back. First down. First down, Tennessee, Tennessee 47. So the pressure now swings over to this Wisconsin defense. Alatori has gone all the way at quarterback. Steve Alatori. And he drills it to his tight end, Mike E. Kofer. They talk so much about the wide receivers and not that much about Alatori, but I must tell you, he has been impressive. Let's take another look at that hooking, see if he gets it. Reaches out with that right hand. Yeah. Looked like the helmet, but I guess that counts. The gain on the last pass play, eight yards, second and two, Wisconsin 45. And there goes the fullback, Alan Tolles. Boy, somebody met him at the pass. Is that Kyle Borland, the junior, out of Fort Atkinson? This is the hardest hitting college football game I've seen in a long, long time. First down run to the Wisconsin 41. Maybe it's the hardest hitting football game I've seen of any kind for a long, long time. Steve Alatori is putting on a great performance and he's using that those wide receivers in particular Anthony Hancock to tremendous advantage 
The result now, a first down at the Wisconsin 30. Hard to describe, Ray, how difficult that pass was that he just completed. It looked like the man had the wide receiver covered. He laid it out over the top. Brilliant day for Alatorre. 20 first downs for Tennessee. Hancock goes left. Galt comes to the right. First down at the Wisconsin 30-yard line. The clock running, nine and a half minutes left in the game. Big hole for Morris. Another Tennessee first down, Randall Morris. What a great lead block he got going into that hole. Again, an exceptionally well-called play. That the plays are being called from upstairs. Somebody on Tennessee is doing a super job. Watch the block right here by number 44. Great blocking, great running. First down, Tennessee at the 18-yard line of Wisconsin. This time, Alan Coles has a reception committee at the line of scrimmage, led by Tim Trumry. A change now in the offensive line. Or rather, in the defensive line. Mark Shoemate, number 76, goes in defensively, replacing Jeff Dellenbach. By the way, I didn't give number 44 name credit. It's Alvin Tolles. He's a freshman. He's 6'2", he's 205 uh, pounds, and he can block. This is a second and 10 play. There's that Hancock again at the six yard line. Alatori putting on a tremendous show. 22 out of 40 passes for almost 300 yards. That was a 12 yard gain or 292 yards on 22 completions out of 40 for quarterback Steve Alatori. He has really been outstanding. First and goal to go. And remember, the volunteers with the football lead by seven with just over eight minutes left to play in the game. Alatori on a keeper, touchdown! The transplant from Cypress, California, just is doing absolutely everything right. Brilliant uh, offensive uh, series marching down the entire field. You're not going to see it much better than that. And a new record in this young Garden State Bowl for most passing yards. The old record by Mark Malone of Arizona State now playing with the professional Pittsburgh Steelers. But Tennessee has moved into a 27 to 14 lead with 8.23 left to play. And Fuad Reves will try for the extra point. He's on target. Tennessee 28, Wisconsin 14. Let's take a look at this. 16 by himself, an individual effort, a great effort, cutting back, cutting behind the flow. That's the mark of a runner, not only a good passer, but a good runner. So with eight minutes and 23 seconds left in the fourth annual Garden State Bowl, Tennessee leads by 14. About to get the football, but down by 14 points with 8.23 remaining. Thad McFadden. Deep. And no run back. It'll be a touchback. So Randy Wright and company has uh, a task in front of them as we look at the touchdown play again. Let's see it again. The lead blocker is going to the outside. The one man did, was not quite sure which way to play it, played it to the outside, and Alatori took it to the inside. So let's see what Randy Wright can do. Alatori's official statistics. 22 of 40, 291 yards, one touchdown passing, one scored running. Wide receiver set out either side. That was McFadden you saw. This is Chucky Davis. Big game for 
Lewis Thompson out to the Badger 42 before Reggie White was able to run him down. How about that? A defensive tackle running down the tailback. Not bad. This Badger team is fighting back, going with the kind of passes, Frankie, you like to see. If they're covering you deep, flip it out short and let your tailback do the running. The C-92 coming to the inside. Great block by Leo Joyce. First down, Wisconsin 42-yard line. This is for Neal. No, couldn't hold on. Marvin Neal couldn't quite hold on. Great attempt. Great effort. College football at its very finest. It is an exciting football game, and I'm sure Ms. Lou must be thrilled. And they've got another great one coming up in that blue bonnet when you think about that little UCLA at Michigan matchup it could be another great game. And up next Friday night, we're going to get a chance to see young Jim McMahon of BYU, Al, against Washington State. Oh, that, that's a great one, too. Second, second down and 10, 42-yard line of Wisconsin. As we come back live, Randy Wright picking out his receiver. There he is, the big tight end, Jeff Nolf. He's having a big game, first down at the 42-yard line of Tennessee. And in now with the play selection comes Marvin Neal. Nolf is having a big game. Big tight end number eight is a sophomore from Escanaba, Michigan. The pride of Wisconsin. Randy Wright brings the Badgers up to the line, first and 10 at the Tennessee 42. Seven and a half minutes left. hit was put on Dave Mohap, the fullback, as somehow Wright managed to get that pass away. It'll be second and ten. Broken up by Carl Zander. This game has been an awful lot of hitting, but if you're going to be a quarterback, you have to expect a few unpleasant moments. That's the beauty of it. When you're looking at those quarterbacks, as much as they're about to be hit, the concentration is so much on the pass, they're so little concerned about themselves. Second down and 10. Penalty flag down, might have been an offside. Oh, what a catch by McFadden. Oh, what a grab by McFadden, and deep, deep. In... It was an offside penalty against Tennessee, and I'm sure it's going to be declined. It's both sides. Let's take one look from the end zone right at it. Now, this is some kind of a catch. Just magnificent effort. The penalty was against Tennessee. Wisconsin has a first and 10. 17 first downs for Wisconsin. First and 10 at the Tennessee 22. Seven minutes and 10 seconds left. The clock is running. Tennessee leading 28 to 14. And there goes Chucky Davis down to the 15-yard line. A gain of eight yards for Davis. Splitting that defense that was expecting a pass. Brian Ingram kept that from being an even bigger game. Second down. He was ruled down at the 16. Second and three. Another great situation for a pass to Chucky Davis. Now they... Uh, Thad McFadden comes in. He's wide to the right side. They've ran it. They've gone deep. And now let's see if they go short. Davis. Oh, great defensive play. And there again was Reggie White. Third down and two. and quarterback Randy Wright. Eight of 15 completions, 111 yards, one touchdown. That pass was thrown to Jeff Nolf. But here's a moment of truth for Wisconsin. Third and three at the Tennessee 15. I think the first down has been picked up by Neal at about the 12-yard line. Yes, that'll be a first down. You know, I'm hearing sound up here. It sounds like fire, firecrackers, fireworks going off. It's incredible. This, the intensity of this hit. 
There's Bates coming into that safety position. They are really leveling both sides, hitting extremely hard. Back live, first down at the Tennessee 12. Touchdown! Dad McFadden. And the Badgers game. are right back in the game. Great football game, great catching, great concentration. There's another indication of just a magnificent effort. Let's take another look at this one. There's Wright. Very cool and calm and collected. You're right in the, the line of scrimmage with him. He fires over. Just a brilliant catch. So now the extra point try. Now that was a great hold on a high snap, Al. That was a great bit of holding by Randy Wright. So it's 28 to 21. Five minutes and 29 seconds remaining. We'll be back after these messages. Now, Al, do you think Wisconsin might try a short kick, or do you think they have enough faith in their defense that they'll kick it deep? Oh, I think, think? I think they have the faith. I think it would be a mistake, frankly, to come with an onside right now. You've got 529 to go. You have plenty of time. You kick it down there force them to kick out. The big trick again is to make sure Willie Gault doesn't make one of those patented runbacks. There he is. Now, you'll notice Gault is up around the 10-yard line. Tennessee is not sure what Wisconsin has in mind right here. Pat Haiti to kick off. 529 left in the game. Gault is going to get the football at the 11. Oh. So now it is up to the Wisconsin defense to try and contain what has been a very explosive Tennessee offense that has already seen the passing record set here, new passing record in the Garden State Bowl. Now the question is, do you go conservative? Do you try to chew up that clock? I think it would be very questionable for Tennessee to try to grind it out. They better stay with their game plan because they cannot afford a quick turnover to the Badgers. Morris is the tailback. Furness is the fullback. This is Hancock. Well, I give Tennessee credit. They're not going into any shell. Out of Torrey to Hancock for about eight yards and I think over 300 yards now in passing for out of Torrey or close to it. He had 291. He just picked up about seven. Yep. So he's 298. Well, the Badgers should be looking for that draw. They was a very, it was a very effective play they ran earlier. They made some valuable yards. If they're looking for pass, the draw could hurt them. With 444 left, second down three. This is Morris, and he gets very, very close to a first down. I think they're going to mark his knee having touched at the 36. And we might have to measure here for the down. First down, say the official. No measurement required. Alatore has got to be awfully tempted. Every time he rolls out, the pursuit of the Badger defensive unit is so dramatic. They're really going with the flow of the play that Alatore can run around and just flip it out. I keep the ball himself on another bootleg. Somewhere in this series, it may not be now, somewhere in this series, I think he's going to try it. All right. A first down play from the Tennessee 36. The clock running. One wide receiver set out on either side. Morris. Good run. Good game. Close to the 44-yard line. A gain of about eight yards before... Clint Sims was able to make the tackle. Again, take a look at it. Looks like he's going to pass a quick draw. The lead blocker makes a good block. Takes it to the outside. A good stiff arm. Ball in the right position. Good play. Keep second, your eye on Alatori. Second down and two at the Tennessee 44. Three minutes, 40 seconds left in the game. The clock running. 
and a big first down for Doug Furness. So now, Tennessee, when they had to do it, has been able to come up with back-to-back -back first downs so that now just three and a half minutes remain in the game. The mark always, I think, of a good football team is what right now is being expressed by Tennessee, the ability to come up with a play when they have to come up with it. They've come a long way. When you think how badly they lost to Georgia, then to USC, and they keep fighting the way they have, it's just a tribute to the bow. First and ten. Hancock was in motion. Randall Morris, the Long Beach, California sophomore, showing that he is going to mean an awful lot to the Tennessee football fortunes in the future. He picked up five yards and a very precious 30 seconds. You know, the stiff arm is getting to be a bit of a lost art. They say, why do you carry the ball in the offhand? Well, in case anybody comes up, you're able to push him off. That is a stiff arm. Second and five. And we may have a delay of game. If so, this could hurt Tennessee. They were second and five. A delay of game penalty would make it second and ten. No, nope, illegal procedure, not delay of game. But it's a five-yard penalty, and it's going to be second down and ten. That stops the clock. Two minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the game. Tennessee, 28. Wisconsin, 21. Good ball, good ball. Illegal procedure. Offense. Still second down. Thank you, referee Ted Humphrey. Mike Miller to the left. Rumble. Tail back, Randall Morris found the handle just in time, but a loss of about three yards. So now. And that, that could have been the football game. Go down on it as quickly as you can. Ooh, boy, he took some punishment. Now, third and 12. Will Tennessee risk putting the ball in the air? The clock running and two minutes and five seconds left to play. Alatori, the whistle blew. The whistle has blown. No play. That stops the clock with exactly two minutes left. It stopped the clock, and if Alatori had thrown that football, frankly, he was going to throw into a situation where just everyone was blanking. The Badgers had every Tennessee player covered. It looks like, again, Alatori, they're going, to, they're going to try to sacrifice the short pass in the hopes that he puts it down short and that they can stop him from the first down. Another penalty. is third and 17 and John Matthews a sophomore tackle out of Memphis has checked into the offensive line of Tennessee third and 17 at the volunteer 42 exactly two minutes left Tennessee leading Wisconsin 28 21 a tremendous catch the 40 yard line enough or no, they're going to mark it at the 41 this might not be enough for a first down the catch was made by Anthony Hancock another pretty just series of great catches and how about the throwing that was absolutely great I mean three men around them one right behind them and he still completes it 24 of 42 completions for Steve Alatori for 315 yards. Is it a first down? No. It is marked about six inches shy of a first down. What do you think the strategy calls for, Al? My go strategy would be go for go it. Go for it. Sure. Well, Tennessee's going for it. They're bringing in another tight end. Larry Hurley, please report to the security They're bringing in two tight ends, Kenny Jones and Mike E. Kofer. Fourth and inches at the Wisconsin 41-yard line. One minute, 52 seconds left in the game. Go! 
It appears that out of Torrey got enough yardage, maybe I should say footage, enough inches, whatever. Where's the ball? Somewhere in there. We'll wait the official signal. We're going to have a measurement. One minute, 43 seconds left. First down. Let's talk about that offensive line again. Let's talk about Lee North, 6'2", 258, going against an all-UPI, all-American in Crumry, doing an outstanding job. Bill Mayo, David James, Singer, and the name I've been avoiding all day. You want to take that one for me, Ray? Trip Yanni Trapovniks. Oh, that is beautiful, Mr. Scott. <laughs> 25 first downs for Tennessee, and none more welcome at this moment than that one. 131 left in the game. Here goes the fullback, Furnace. For about four or five big yards, Wisconsin's coaches just signal to their team, take time out. With 1.16 left, it will be second down and six at the Wisconsin 37-yard line. There it is again, number 50, working hard the entire game, Crumry. Next to him is Shoemate, Sims. Fighting it all the way. They have not stopped hitting for a moment. When play resumes at the end of this Wisconsin timeout, it'll be second down and six for Tennessee at the Wisconsin 37-yard line. The Badger cheerleaders have had a ball. The Wisconsin band has been here. The volunteer band has been here. The fourth annual Garden State Bowl winding down to a conclusion in this match between two teams representing two of the top conferences in the country. Tennessee from the Southeastern, Wisconsin from the Big Ten. Second down and six. One minute, 16 seconds left. Coach Johnny Majors has said so often this week that the, his team has not lost a game that they were in and could have won. It looks like they're about to do it again. Furness gets about two yards, and at this moment, Wisconsin takes another timeout. It will be third and four. About a two-yard gain. One minute and eight seconds left. And Alan Tolles comes over to the sidelines. He's the fullback for Wisconsin. Beg your pardon. He's the linebacker. Jody O'Donnell comes over from Wisconsin, along with Larry Sperlin, two of the linebackers. Ray, one of the very gratifying things that's happened this week. There's been a great comments that the Tennessee people, the Tennessee officials, the Wisconsin officials have all had to say about the Garden State Bowl. John Majors and Dave McLean have both said that this has been a great and most uh, educational experience. The kids have been all over New Jersey, all over New York. They've circled the island. They were around the, the Statue of Liberty. It was a, a great experience. Third down and four, Tennessee at the Wisconsin 35-yard line. One minute, eight seconds left to play. Tennessee leading by seven. This is Morris for no gain. Randall Morris, no gain. And now it's going to be fourth down, and David Greenwood came out of the secondary to make a fine play. And now Wisconsin has taken what I believe was its final timeout. But they apparently will get the football with 103 left to play. Now, will Wisconsin go all out and try to block the punt? Will they instead peel back and try to set up a return? You're up. 
three of the Wisconsin players are huddling along the near sidelines. This is a <laughs> this is such a chip shot. That's a great shot. Back deep for Wisconsin. we land in Madison? These are the people who are responsible for putting on our Ms. Lou network telecast today as we look at Matt Vandenboom, the truly outstanding senior safety from Kimberly, Wisconsin. Yes, Al. This will be the last chance that the fans will get to see young Cole quit this year, the freshman kicker. He is... Oh, they're, going to have, they're not going to have Cole quit in. Oh, no. They have John Warren in. Well, that's a Cole quit. Well, Cole quit is put in the, in the stands from there. Got it away. It was ruled down at the one. No touchback. Down at the one by Mike Miller, who has been a key wide receiver, and Vandenboom is questioning whether it should not have been ruled a touchback. At any rate, the officials say not a touchback. It's at the one, 55 seconds left. Wisconsin has no timeouts remaining. And Randy Wright, who has had an excellent second half, will try to get something going from all the way back at the Badger one yard line. Tennessee deploying its secondary, as you may expect, very deep. Right. His arm was hit as he released the ball by Reggie White. Now, Chris Wampler was although back there, already back there, but Reggie White, continuing his truly impressive play today, was also putting pressure on Randy Wright. Second down, 10 from the Badger 1. Let me ask you something, Al. At a time like this, it would seem to me that maybe a screen might have a chance to get him out of the huddle a little bit in view of the aggressiveness now of this Tennessee defense. It does, but you'll be screening behind the line of scrimmage. Uh, at this point, it's prayer, really. All right. All the way out for a first down to 22-yard line. Now that was Al Toon, a freshman wide receiver out of Newport News, Virginia. We haven't seen him yet today. Well, they used the concept really as you were referring to, not the screen, but they were using something unusual. <laughs> Could be the longest flea picker of all time. Well, he got him off the uh, deep end zone. Just didn't get him out of bounds. 34 seconds left. 30 seconds left. Shotgun formation. Wanted to hit Thad McFadden, but that at least accomplishes one thing for Wisconsin. It stops the clock with 24 seconds left to play. Randy Wright will be back. He's just a junior. Wright, 9 out of 18, 123 yards, two touchdowns. And all of it coming here in the second half. Now back goes Al Toon, who was on the receiving end of that flea flicker, but did not find a man open and elected to run the ball. Second and ten play. Toon is out to the left. Neal is out to the left. Go Tennessee! That's it. Two and All right, now here's two and again. Almost intercepted. Into a crowd. Carlton Peoples broke it up. Neal was the intended receiver. It's going to be third and ten. I guess if you were to ask Dave McLean, because it was almost certain he was going to do that, he must have the best arm on the team. I guess he can throw the furthest, but since no one was deep, he went short with it. So now into the game goes Chucky Davis. Thad McFadden, Michael Jones, a tailback, and two new wide receivers. 18 seconds left, third and 10 at the Wisconsin 22. Wisconsin 
Chucky Davis trying to get out of bounds, and he does with 10 seconds left and another first down. Wisconsin is giving it every bit they can. Their best shot right to the final seconds, another Wisconsin first down. Just take one more look. They have not quit for a moment. As I said earlier, it's just college football all the way. Old college try. Ten seconds left. First down at the Wisconsin 40. Neal goes right. Toon is to the left. Shotgun formation. Three deep defenders are 20 yards behind the line. This is headed for Toon. Couldn't hold on at the 20 with two seconds left. Actually, if he had held on to the football, it might have marked the end of the game. It would have. So Wisconsin gets one more gas, barring a penalty. 10 of 20 for right, 142 yards, two touchdowns. Really, your only chance at this point, although it's very, very slim, is to try to get it to someone like McFadden, who has the speed, or Jones, who also has speed. But they're, they're going to be the two people that will be covered. So two ticks away from the end of the game. Go Tennessee! Come on, Tennessee! The game is officially over right now. This is the last shot. And that is the end of the fourth annual Garden State Bowl. Scanlon, where are you? And I'm here with David Sherwood, the president of the Prudential Insurance Company right now. And David, first of all, let me thank you for your company's interest in the Garden State Bowl. Thanks very much, Pat. It's been a delight, and what a fantastic uh, day of football we've had here. This is the fourth of the Garden State Bowls, and unquestionably, it's been the most exciting and closely fought right down to the wire. And David, you're going to tell us a little bit about the most valuable player today. Yes, sir. The most valuable player, it's my pleasure to announce, is the quarterback from Tennessee Volunteers, number 16, Steve Alatore. What a fantastic day he had today. Yes, he certainly did. Oh, what a day for the senior from Cypress, California. He was 24 of 42 for 315 yards, along with one touchdown rushing and one touchdown passing. Thank you very much, David, for joining us. Thank you, Pat. It's been great to be here. Okay. Now let's go back to Ray. The highest mileage finale. And for Pat Scanlon, my longtime friend, Aldi Regattas, this is Ray Scott saying... <laughs>